right, there it is. There it is. Give me a little chapstick popping. All right. How are you guys doing? I'm nice and refreshed. How y'all doing, family? Let me look in the chat room and see who's in there so far. But Denzel Sausage Tent is right here. I'm here. <laughs> Welcome to the Tariq live show, Tariq radio show. We're here. My face is looking a little ashy as usual, but it's all good. It's all good. All right, man. What's going on, man? We're here. I'm, all, I'm like nine minutes late, but I'm still here. It's 10.08 down there, and um, you must be on the East Coast. All right, y'all get on in the room. It's Memorial Day weekend. I hope everybody had a good time for Memorial Day weekend. We got Lila B. We got Charm. What's up, Natural Charm? She said, I look handsome, and you look lovely, and I say that in a non-sexual way. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to end up like Morgan Freeman, you know, people... You say, hey, you look nice, and all of a sudden you got to do a press conference because you got some white supremacists trying to use you to fund a white feminist movement. You dig? So I got to be very, I got to be very checkered with the compliments here. Yeah, because right now we're going back to Jim Crow. You can't go back. As a, this is for black people. White dudes, you can, you can rape a goat, and they ain't nothing going to happen, but with us, they, they're taking us back to the Jim Crow, the reckless eyeballing, you can't look at nobody, you say something to somebody, that's rape, all this so shit. So you, you, you gotta, so I'm just gonna quit, I'm just gonna compliment your intelligence. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna compliment your intelligence. And boy, Charm, you are so intelligent. There's some intelligent ladies in the room. What's up to all the intelligent ladies? Yes, yeah, somebody said Denzel is next. Oh, man, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Will Smith ain't going to be next because Will Smith, is he's a, he's a moneymaker. So all the cats who can um, generate money for the, the system, you know, they'll, they'll let them hold on for a minute. You did? They said football players are talking about sitting out until Kaepernick is hired. That would be the best thing they can do. Samuel Jackson, he's still a moneymaker. Sam Jackson is still a moneymaker. You know who I want. Um, hopefully, they don't try them with Byron Allen, somebody like that. I see they, just to be spiteful, they would probably do something like that. James Earl Jones, though. I could see them doing something with James Earl Jones, throwing him out there. You dig? But somebody who has a, a, a thorough reputation, but... They're not making a lot of money for Hollywood now. You understand? Quincy, Quincy Jones. I, I, I can see something. I can see them throwing Quincy under the bus. I can definitely see them throwing Quincy under the bus. You understand? Because Quincy is already, he did that interview and they really blew that interview up of him now, with with Jordan, no, the Nike brand makes too much. the The Nike brand is that, that's a billion dollar industry. The the Air Jordans and all that. So the, he's going to be protected for a little while. But that's what we want to talk about tonight. You know, once they're through using you up, that's when they let you go. Now let's be real. Let's let's talk turkey. My man Eddie Griffin said, "You know, no black man gets out the game clean, really." And when you, when you look at it, family, how many successful, influential black men have we seen peacefully pass away and pass their empire or their wealth or their resources to another generation? I want y'all to think about that. Have we seen that? I want you to think about that. I can't really think of any major black entertainer or celebrity, think about that. I want you to think about that. Who had a peaceful, a long, stress-free or, or scandal-free life where they were able to pass their resources down without, them, without it being a traumatic or tragic thing? 
Somebody said Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was a vegetable for damn near 30 years. Don't count. All right? Muhammad Ali was a vegetable. I, and I say that with all due respect. I have the utmost respect for my brother. I have the utmost respect for him. But they backed off of Muhammad Ali. Remember, Muhammad Ali, you know, in the height of his career, they threw him under the bus. In the height of his career. You understand? No, no, y'all talking about people. Hell, well, Don Cornelius, you know, his death was real questionable. Did his son get that paper? They said he committed suicide, not James Brown. No, I'm, I'm, listen, listen to what I'm saying. With white celebrities or entertainers, when they die, they, there's no blemish on them. You understand? They die peacefully. There's no blemish on their name. Their name isn't tarnished. They were in good health up until old age kicked in. They had a long, peaceful life, and they were able to successfully pass the resources that they accumulated onto the next generation. When you think of black entertainers, I'm talking about the ones who've died already. I ain't talking about the ones who live in. Do you know the Marley family, boy? They, they be raping the shit out of Bob Marley's catalog, man. The Marley catalog, boy. That thing was mired in all types of tug of wars and scandal. You dig? Not with, you said Whitney Houston? Whitney Houston was, her shit was tragic. Whitney Houston died at a young age. Listen to what I'm saying. Mysteriously, all that she drowned in a tub bullshit. Don't, don't believe everything they tell you. You understand? Think about that. Name a, how many black entertainers have we seen who didn't die tragically, meaning young, way too young. Michael died young, tragically. Prince died young, pretty much young, tragically. Come on now. Nelson Mandela, really? Nelson Mandela was in jail for damn near 30 years. All right? Real talk, Charm. Whitney Houston, they said she had defense wounds all over her body. Yeah, but you say Ray Charles, but Ray Charles was already blind. So that was already a tragic thing right there. So going after a blind dude who's already blind, you, you understand that's already... Sam Cook. you understand? Tragic death. These tragic, mysterious deaths. Thurgood Marshall was a fucking... Um, an informant for the FBI, by the way. You better look up Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was a, 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 a he was an informant, brother. Donnie Hathaway. Donnie Hathaway fell out of a window. They say he jumped out of a window because he was schizophrenic. Come on. Uh, it, 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 all of us, we have, black folks, we have these tragic ass deaths. Jimi Hendrix died a tragic death at a young age. Magic is still alive, though. Otis Redding died a tragic death. Just think about that. Richard Pryor, his, his shit was tragic. And Richard Pryor wasn't holding long money like that when he died. I mean, he was suffering from that MS for a long time. You understand? And, and somebody said Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac just started getting money. His career really started to become fruitful, you know, once he got the television show. He had just started getting his thing popping. That Rick James. Rick James' money wasn't that long. Rick James, you know, he lost a lot of his money from the 80s. He got more money through Hammer. When MC Hammer sampled his record, that's when Rick James got another flush your money, but that money kind of dissipated too. Dick Gregory wasn't really holding like that, though. You dig? Okay, y'all, this thing said heavy D. All right. 
James Brown. But James Brown, remember, when he got older, his life was mired in tragedy. James went to jail and all types of shit. And there was still some bullshit going on with his money and his catalog. And there was some stuff going on with that. There's a whole bunch of back and forth going on with the James Brown catalog. And I don't even know if they have that, that settled out yet. But the fact is, man, let's be real. That's a hard reality we got to face, man. With us, with black people, man, you know, they, they have an organized, and th these are not coincidences that so many successful black people, they have a tragic life or a tragic death that ultimately ends up with some type of controversy as far as the inheritance. inheritance. There's always some type of controversy with the inheritance of their money. This nigga said Gary Coleman, man of y'all don't stop. It's never just success. They die. They had a peaceful life. Pass that money down right before they died. Just like with Morgan Freeman. They, they know Morgan Freeman could croak any day now. But they're like, okay, let's get this last piece of scandal in there. You understand? But think about it. How many black entertainers have died peacefully? They didn't have a tragic life. They didn't die young or tragically. They had an old, they just lived out their old age and they passed their money down. Now, I know some black folks behind the scenes, black business people, like one person, the only person I could think of is probably um, A.G. Gaston from down there in Birmingham. He was a very um, um, wealthy black man who owned a lot of businesses. And you know, he, he was old. He died. I don't know. Nobody knew who he was, though. He was kind of a behind the scenes dude. And with A.G. Gaston, from what I understand, the money that he gave his children, they, you know, fucked it off. You dig? But people like that. Somebody said pebbles. What do you think about Zimbabwe trying to rejoin the Commonwealth? So I'm trying to understand what exactly are, are they trying to accomplish? Are they trying to... Is that part of the African Union? What are they exactly trying to do? Yeah, A.G. Gaston was the dude. I met him at a, as a kid. I met him at a very young age. Reginald Lewis, he died. Exactly. He died tragically. Marvin Gaye. You, you understand? And Marvin's money wasn't even that long, too. Marvin was having money problems. You dig? Oh, they're trying to join the Commonwealth of the U.K.? Oh, man. Oh, Lord, I hope they don't do that. Really? Oh, Lord. Oh, I hope they ain't trying to do that, man. Damn. Man. Yeah, that, that's not a good look, man. I, I knew they were doing some trade with China and all that. Man. Yeah, Africa, the UK is trying to get all those resources. They're going to turn that shit back into Rhodesia. They should know better. I'm going to look more into that. I'm going to definitely look more into that. But you know, we just got to be on top of our game, man. We got to think, understand just because we get in a situation where we get to be around those in the dominant society and make some paper with them. Don't think that you're all the way in. You always understand that these people in the dominant society, they'll, they'll flip on you. These people are playing as a team. And when they bring us in as an individual, we think we're part of their team. Now, you, you go in there, you play the role and do what you have to do. You fake it if you have to. But always at least have in the back of your mind that, okay, I'm still an outsider, even though I'm making millions of dollars with these folks. Ultimately, I'm still an outsider. Let me not get too comfortable because they'll make a Negro real comfortable. And that's the problem. Then Negroes start trying to give other Negroes advice, just like Morgan Freeman. Well, if you don't talk about race, it doesn't exist. Oh, racism only exists if you talk about it. You know, he was talking all that bullshit. And I did a whole 
broadcast on that. See, and Cosby too. These niggas, they get old. They they think that they're in. They throw all them white women at them. They're tearing up white pussy left and right. And they start getting comfortable and start preaching to the black folks. You people, you still a piece of pound cake and then you, you get shot by not pulling up your pants. Uh, you start talking that, you think that you in there and you ain't. And like I said, I was I did I was talking about this on a live broadcast on Instagram the other day about Morgan Freeman. The the charges on him are so weak. It's like he looked he looked at a woman sexually. He looked women up and down with sexual undertones. It was that type of shit they were saying about Morgan Freeman. And we got to understand, in a system of white supremacy, they can use the I'm white and I say so law on you at any given time because that's what the system of white supremacy is governed by. That's it. We try to make it more complex than what it is. The system of white supremacy is simply governed by the I'm white and I say so rule. And when the white supremacists say I'm white and I say so, you did something and I... you. I don't need no proof. The proof is I said you did it. And I have the court system, the media apparatus, the police system, and the military system to back me up. Just in case you don't like it, I can punish you. I have a prison system. I can throw you in because I'm white and I say so. That's what we have to understand. And we got this thing, well, if we just stop acting a certain way. It ain't about us acting a certain way. It's all about being dominated. The white supremacists, they're all about dominating us. And it's all about punishing us at will, in large numbers, whenever they feel like it. That's why we don't need to, to boycott and march and all that bullshit. Uh, and when I mean boycott, I mean standing in front of a building, I won't eat here, I won't eat here. You know, that's just you trying to get attention. Just say, fuck them. You understand? But no matter how innocent you think your interactions are with some suspected white supremacists, They'll flip on you, just like Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman was, like I said the other day, he was just kicking some old black man game, you know, trying to flirt with them white women like old niggas do. You understand? Using them old ass Negro flirting lines. Oh, look at you over there looking like the bees knees. Oh, you're looking just as beautiful as a morning dew. Yeah, Morgan Freeman was using some of that old school game, that old school nigga flirting. And then they flipped it on. Yeah, flirting is now a crime. He he put out a statement. You know, I I talk to people and make them feel comfortable around me. You know, he's trying to nigga explain. That don't matter. You can't nigga explain to them. Yeah, he's using them 1972 lines. Yeah. I like to take you to go get a, a Paps Blue Ribbon. I'd like to take you to go get some malt nigga. Girl, you're fine as wine and so divine. He's using that old school game. Well, he's using the Jim Crow flow on the ladies. I'd like to take you to a nice juke joint around the corner. That's what Morgan was doing. It was harmless. Just using his old school game. Trying to take the ladies to a juke joint. You dig? Now they're flipping on him. Oh my God, he was talking to me. It was so sexual. You know? And that's how white supremacy works. Can y'all see me? Hold on one second. My thing starts. I don't know why my, my shit be freezing up over here. Y'all bear with me for a second because I'm freezing up. And I can't see you guys. All right? Hopefully this is a little better. All right. There we go. Yeah, Morgan was doing a little nigga explaining. Oh, yeah, shout out to everybody for giving to the Melanoid Ministries. There you go. Respect. And also, you can go to melanoidnation.org to contribute to the Melanoid Ministries. But well, we're in here heavy, aren't we? We're in here heavy. But, yeah, Morgan Freeman was using some of that old school-ass game on the ladies. That must be jam, because jelly don't shake like that. <laughs> Y'all know that shit your dad be saying. <laughs> Do fries go with that shake. 
Yeah, it did. Come on, man. Was, but Morgan should have known better. Oh, you heavy like a Chevy. <laughs> Uh. Hey, what's happening, Captain? <laughs> the old ass line. <laughs> what's happening, Captain? <laughs> Man, he was using that old school game on the late ladies. Y'all know all the ladies in the room. Y'all had an old nigga try to holler at you before. Some of y'all young ladies in the room. Y'all had an old nigga try to spit at you with some of that old Morgan Freeman game. You did. <laughs> Hey, young thing, you sure are bad mamma jamma. <laughs> hey, what's cooking, toots? <laughs> oh, y'all get spit at by one of them old what's cooking toots. <laughs> y'all had them old niggas trying to holler at you. <laughs> Hell yeah, them old players. Walking around smelling like Stetson Cologne. You dig? And some of y'all ladies hollered back. You're like, well, shit, I need this little rent paid. Hey, Morgan. <laughs> so one of y'all didn't fuck Morgan Freeman. I'm sorry. One of y'all ladies, probably in this chat room, didn't fuck Morgan Freeman. Come on now. Some of y'all, some of y'all are opportunists. Not all of you, but some of y'all. You're like, well, shit, boy, this little rent is, boy, I'm having trouble with the rent. I can't pay for my son's braces. Fuck, man, there's some new purse I want to get. And at the gas station, you see a, a Rolls Royce pull up, and it's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> hey, what's cooking, good looking? Hey, nothing. <laughs> is you Morgan Freeman? <laughs> In the flesh. I like your Rolls Royce. You start flirting back. I like your Rolls Royce, Morgan. You look real young in person, Morgan. Oh, you flatter me, toots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're going anywhere special? I, I don't know. I, <laughs> it's my birthday. You know, y'all always talk about it's your goddamn birthday. It's my birthday, Morgan. Oh. I can take you to the mall and get you something. <laughs> Okay, let me let me call my mama and tell her to watch my son. <laughs> Text him. Girl, I'm about to get the bag from Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and y'all go to the mall with Morgan Freeman and that nigga starts getting the bag. That nigga gets you all types of red bottoms. That nigga, that nigga gets you the brand new French Connection heels. That nigga gets you a Gucci bag. You balling the fuck out. They're like, okay, Morgan's nice to meet you. Oh, the night is not over. <laughs> Where are we gonna go? Oh, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna go to paradise. <laughs> we're going to go to a fantasy land. Where that? That's my house. Then you go to Morgan Freeman's house, and oh, Morgan's old ass have you in the buck. That nigga have your legs all up in the air, tan that pussy all the way up. Oh yes. I'll talk to daddy, baby. <laughs> oh, oh, this was is the truth. You think, you think he old, that nigga done pop two Cialis pills and them old niggas will fuck the shit out of you. Morgan in there, tan, that, put, that nigga done put on the whispers for some romance. <laughs> And you in there getting fucked to rock steady. <laughs> you dig? Then that nigga, he be sounding, he, he stops being March of the Penguin Morgan. He turned into Lean on Me Morgan. Turn over on your stomach. Huh? Turn over! <laughs> okay. You like this dick, don't you? I said, you like the dick, don't you? Hey, look, you like the dick, you're going to suck it. If you're going to suck the dick, you're going to suck it expeditiously. <laughs> you fuck around. What do y'all done got with Morgan Freeman's ass? And you're you on Instagram holding the bag up like you a, a boss bitch. You got... 
<laughs> you on Instagram with the bag that you got from Morgan Freeman. With a soul pussy. <laughs> you holding the bag up and holding your coochie at the same time. Ball in life. Hashtag Shawshank Redemption. You dig? Some of y'all done fucked an old Morgan Freeman sugar daddy before. All them women flossing on the gram. Where y'all? Where you think they get all that fly shit from? When you see women on the gram all in front of Rolls Royces and shit, all with bedazzled hats, the hat got all types of diamonds and shit, and they, they all posing and they got the, <laughs> being a boss bitch is hard. Do you know how she got that diamond hat? Morgan Freeman was eating her ass. <laughs> she had to let a, an elderly, a elderly nigga was eating the hepatitis out of her ass. <laughs> she don't tell you that. She all up in, in Dubai. You see these women in Dubai with the red bottoms and they all in Miami. Standing outside the hotel room with diamonds and shit, and nails on fleek, and the hotel room smelling like Ben Gay and Badussi. Cause the old nigga she had to fuck to get all that is right there in the room waiting. You got Morgan Freeman at the hotel room in Miami. I now know. Don't run the credit card all the way up. <laughs> there's a limit. I can't let you use the black card, but there's a limit on the American Express. You dig? Man. Yeah, I was in Dubai. Yeah, I was in Dubai. Man, man, man. Lord, Lord, Lord. But yeah, that's what it is, man. You know, they'll, they'll put the more trumped up charges on cats and these these suspected white supremacists, these dudes get to, they do everything. They do all types of sexually inappropriate shit. Yeah, the sugar daddies don't be in the Snapchat pics. Oh, them sugar daddies, they, they leave him out. Why right, y'all think y'all see these women, these old random chicks with all this fly shit? Y'all see these random women all in Hawaii, you see these random women in the Bahamas with their homegirl. Like, who, what the fuck is she doing to get all this shit? Her and her homegirl are both fucking Morgan Freeman. <laughs> they fucking an old nigga. One of them get the dick, the other one has the hole in the balls. <laughs> they have to. Double team them old nuts. You dig? Man. But, um, man, what else is going on out here? Somebody asked me about the NFL. The NFL, man, you know, they're, they're tightening the noose on the brothers there, man. That's just, that's a racial backlash. We got to understand this. Whenever the dominant society feels like they're taking an L and they've taken an L with the protest because that's showing the world how there is no racial equality. So that means the U.S. can't go around acting like the moral authority when you have some high profile black people showing the world that they are jeopardizing their careers in order to speak out against the racial injustice. See, this is for the world to see. This is why I convincing the white supremacists here that they need to do better, that's just fruitless. And understand, the white supremacists, they don't like taking an L. They never take an L. They always regroup. They're always plotting to regroup. If they take an L, they regroup. And they're plotting on getting back on top. They're plotting on how to dominate. Black people, we have to understand that. We have to understand how to keep something going all the time, keep a movement going. We like to do things in little spurts and then go back to the bullshit. That's our problem. That's where we mess up. Oh, yeah, the NFL fans are racist as fuck, and I don't watch the NFL. 
I don't watch it. And I have a lot of friends who are players, but I'm cool. The thing is, in the dominant society, if they take an L, they all get on code and work behind the scenes nonstop, I mean 24 hours a day, on how to get back into a position of dominance. If they feel like their dominance is waning, they're going to go back to the drawing board and acknowledge that they took a loss. They, they acknowledge that they take a loss. See, black folks, we want to be in denial about everything. When we take a loss, we sit there, ain't no white, we're the first one talking about, ain't no white supremacy, ain't nobody supreme over me. We be, black folks be talking that goofy shit. Black folks be talking that. And also, when we get any semblance of a victory, we spend too much time celebrating. We want to celebrate the victory. Shout out to Eugenia Spivey for her $10. Thank you, dear. Shout out to Brother Christopher Ellis. My man gave 100 Shout out to 904 Taller Tim. My nigga gave $4. And I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. James McClary, he gave 19 Ja Jimenez, respect to you. The you, the you Melanin Warrior, love that name, brother. Tamar G, she gave $2. I love that, baby. You give what you can. I love that. I, I respect that. But yeah, they always think from a military standpoint. They are always thinking from a military standpoint. We always think of situations from a begging standpoint. We're trying to beg for attention. We're trying to beg for mercy. And we have to start getting into a position of thinking militarily on how we're going to protect ourselves without begging. And you do that by getting on code. You understand? We have to be military minded. That's why you got to understand in the 1960s, more black people were military minded. Because let, let's go back in history. Some of the stuff that was happening in the 60s that the white supremacists were trying to do, it kept backfiring on them. You understand? And this is why in the 60s, the 60s were very pivotal. The 60s left the white supremacists scrambling because they didn't expect a big civil rights movement like that. So that just kind of took them by surprise to a certain degree. So they were left scrambling. They had to kind of figure things out. And after the civil rights movement, they had to set up institutions just in case something like that happened again. But understand, in the 1960s, if you were black and you had uncles and all these people, who the hell is calling me? Hold on. What the fuck is this? Hold on. Hello? What's up? What's this? What? Okay, I remember. I got to call you back. I'm doing a live. I'm doing a live broadcast, brother. I call you back. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that, guys. But like I was saying, in the 1960s, if you're black and you got uncles who were in their teens or the late teens or 20s in the 1960s, they most likely were drafted to Vietnam. You understand? And understand, in the 1960s, because there was so much violence in the streets, black people, the young black people, in the streets of America were rising up. The media don't like to talk about that. But the young black people were rising up against the status quo, violently rising up. They keep telling you that the 60s were all about nonviolence. That is a lie. Black people were not nonviolent in the 60s. Don't let them tell you that lie. That is a lie. Black people were not nonviolent. They just keep showing Dr. King. Dr. King was talking that nonviolence. That's why they keep propping them up. I want y'all to be very clear. But all these other groups, they were like, hey, we like Dr. King, but we ain't on that nonviolent shit. You understand? So many of these people were not nonviolent, and they were giving the dominant society the business. And they had them shook to a great degree. 
So what they were doing in order to get these young people off the streets, they were disproportionately drafting black men in the 1960s. In the 1960s, they were really targeting a lot of black men to be drafted to the army as a way to get them off the streets, whereas the white dudes were all up in San Francisco turned into hippies and shit. They were smoking and weed and LSD. They were chilling. But they were sending black men to, to Vietnam like crazy. That's why when you look at old movies about the 60s, like um, Dead Presidents, they talked about the brothers being drafted over there to Vietnam and all this stuff. You did? And that was a way for them to get all these young black folks, or many of these young black folks, yeah, several of my uncles were drafted. Several of them. Damn near all of them, to be honest. I think my youngest uncle, I don't think he was, but many of my uncles were. And in the, in the 60s, when these brothers got back, remember, they got back. And once they got back, they had this military training. So that made them more about that life when they got back. You understand? The Panthers, many of these guys were ex-military. Many of these guys fought Vietnam. Many of these guys were in the war. So these guys had military training now. So that really backfired on them. You understand? Yeah, they, uh, they were putting a lot of brothers in the front line over there so they can get killed. Yeah, like Geronimo Pratt. That brother was thorough. Vietnam. So understand, when a lot of brothers came back, you know, they were about that life. For real, for real. And there's a lot of killings that went on. There was on one situation with the, um, I think over in Camp Pendleton. Because understand, this is another thing. In the, the military, you also had a lot of white supremacist groups. He had a lot of white supremacist groups in the military. And if you talk, because my dad was in Vietnam too, if you talk to older black people who fought in the war, understand that they experienced racism in the army as well. They would have segregated um, barracks and all this shit in the army during the war. You're fighting an enemy over here and you got to fight with these damn white supremacists who many black folks said had Confederate flags. You had all these racist fuckers in the army who's supposed to be fighting with you. You understand? Still do. Still do. And again, back then, black people, as now, would get court-martialed more than any other group. They would get disproportionately court-martialed for any little reason. They Black people would not get the same level of promotion. Even now, they don't. What they'll do, they'll put up a Colin Powell or somebody... But the Army, those brothers who are real thorough in the Army, in the military, in the Marines, these dudes are real thorough. They don't get the same promotion as one of these white cats. And military dudes who are in the military now, you know they don't. You know you don't. You did? Yeah, and, and many of the Vietnamese, they were like, hey, soul brother, this ain't your war. You did? A lot of brothers would say that. They went to Vietnam and the, the Vietnamese would say, hey, so, brother, this ain't your war. Yeah, your dad was in Vietnam? Yeah, yeah, my dad was there too. And that's why when you had people like Muhammad Ali publicly saying, I ain't going to war, I'm not going to fight no Viet Cong. They never did nothing to me. The Viet Cong never called me a nigga. That resonated around the world, man. That resonated, that was big. That was big around the world. Because when we should have capitalized that even more on that even more, because in Vietnam, when I mean, when, when in the '60s, when people like Ali would say stuff like that, the world would be like, "Okay, we fuck with them. We we rock with those Black Americans over there." That's why many of these militant groups they could go around the country, uh, not the country, but they'd go around the world, and they would be protected in certain countries, like the. Members of the Black Panther, they went over to Algeria. Um, Robert Williams, he went over to China. He, was, he uh, had the book Negroes with Guns. He went over to China for a long time in exile. 
cats would go to Cuba in exile. They would go to Algeria in exile. They would go to these, these different countries, and these countries would basically roll out the red carpet for them. You understand? So the thing is, in, in the 1960s, black people were not on some docile, non-violent shit all the time. And again, when those Panthers came back and some of them brothers came back from Vietnam, they really weren't with the bullshit. And this is why they've always tried to limit us from having international allies. Yeah, Asada Shakur, she's still down there in Cuba. They do not want us to get international allies. This is why the image of the black American, they like to show you the rich rapper. They like to show the wealthy entertainers. They don't show you that they break them after a while in their career. But they like to show, you know, the, the rich rapper and say, hey, look, all the blacks are doing great here. The black people are doing great here. Yeah, the Viet Cong, they didn't have any issues with black people because the president of Vietnam, the leader of Vietnam was, at the time, was Ho Chi Minh. And Ho Chi Minh was a Garveyite. Ho Chi Minh, we talked about that in Hidden Colors 4. No, 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 no. We talked about that in 1804. I'm sorry. Yeah, Ho Chi Minh, he met with the Panthers because Ho Chi Minh was a Garveyite. Ho Chi Minh, when he came to, to the U.S., he was staying in Harlem. And he would go study under Marcus Garvey. So that respect was there. My man, Akala, he told me when they go to Vietnam, I mean, the brothers are treated with utmost respect over there. He said they're treated with the utmost respect. What's up, Joe Doom? But the thing is, it's very important for us to get international allies to reach out to brothers and sisters and into other cultures globally just to have the international connection. And it's very important for us to just get a code too. It's, it's very important for us to get on code with people who want to be on code. Our thing is, as black folks, we spend a lot of time trying to recruit people and it's just too late in the day for that. We don't have time to be recruiting folks because we got to understand this. These white supremacists, man, it's not, they're not taking any prisoners. They're not taking no prisoners. Black men, women, and children are in danger. Did y'all see the story I posted up on my, um, my Instagram of this one-year-old little black girl who was adopted by these suspected white supremacists down in Nashville. Mark Barker, I think that's, Matt Barker, I think that's the guy's name. They, he had a couple of kids. I don't know any details about his other kid, but these, this white couple they adopted this black kid, this little black girl, cute little one-year-old black girl. He dropped one kid off at daycare, but forgot to drop the other one off and left the little girl in the car all day. And the little girl died. And that just broke my damn heart. She died of heat. I mean, he left this little girl in a hot car all day. He and the killing thing is the kick. The kicker is him and his wife didn't get charged for this, and that's the problem I have. Him and his wife did not get charged for leaving this baby in a car to die. Now I don't want to hear all that. It was an accident. I get on that in a minute because accident or not. If black people leave their children in a damn car, you're going to jail. Black people are going to get immediately arrested, even if the child don't die. There are stories of black women who left the kids in the car to go apply for a job, and then they get arrested. There's one sister who got thrown under the jail. The kid didn't even die. She needed to get a job. She didn't have no babysitter, so she had the child in the car while she wouldn't try to get a job, and they threw her under the jail. Black folks, you, you leave a dog in a car, your ass going to jail. These folks let a baby die in a car. This was in Nashville. Look up the name Matt Bark. I think that's his name. They left this little baby in a car all day. 
by accident. Now let's go to that accident thing. How the fuck you leave a baby in a car all day by accident? How do you how do you not remember you didn't take the baby out the car? Because they haven't really cleared up how you leave a damn baby in a car by accident. How you not drop a baby off and don't remember you didn't drop the damn baby off. I, that don't make no sense to me. At a daycare. And also, I know and I have children. If you go to a daycare or take your kids to a daycare and you don't show up, usually the daycare will call you. Right? Who got kids? If you have a school or a daycare you take the kids to and you don't show up, They'll call you, especially if you pay. Usually they'll call and say something. Hey, the baby coming in today? You bringing the baby in today? Uh, they'll call you. You did? I don't know how that's a damn accident, how you accidentally forget that you dropped one kid off and didn't drop another kid off. That's complete bull. I mean, all day. You just left the baby in the car all day, but you, that don't make no sense. What it looks like is, because you we got to understand how demonic these white supremacists can be. It looks like these white supremacists will adopt these black kids, put out an insurance policy on these babies, and then all of a sudden the kids have these little accidents. Because no, you notice all of this, these black kids being adopted by these white families, it's always some abuse or accidents or something fucked up happening to the black kids. With that um, Devontae Hart situation, those kids were beaten and abused for years by those white supremacist women until they ultimately killed those babies. I mean, I can just go through case after case after case of black kids getting adopted. Then all of a sudden they done died. Their organs are missing. They fell off a cliff. They done died in a car. I mean, damn. All of this ain't no fucking coincidence, man. Starved to death. Something fucked up happened. And all of a sudden the white family is, is, is papered up now. How many of y'all remember that comedian Paula Poundstone? Y'all remember her? She's this real, this weird comedian that was all over the place in the 80s and 90s. She was a hot comic. She was basically the next Ellen, you know. You had these les white lesbian comics, and it was Paula Poundstone. She was, doing, she was doing a lot of stuff in the 80s and 90s. She kind of peaked in the 90s. Some of y'all might not remember. Yeah, they, they, she, they, they said she was drunk and all that. She was a drunkard, but the thing is, she was another one of these white lesbians, big old lesbian, who adopted some black kids. She adopted black kids, too. Yeah, a lot of folks don't know those kids were black. See, that's the thing. They don't tell you that. They don't. Y'all don't know the, those kids she had were black. Those were black kids, and she went to court. She got charged for sexually molesting one of the girls and, I think, abusing one of the boys. And she took some kind of plea deal. But that's, that kind of fucked her career up at the time. Her career kind of went downhill because of that scandal, those abuse scandals and sexual molestation charges and all that stuff. And they, that's what they said in court, that she was, she was drunk and she didn't know no better. She was an alcoholic. They, they did that thing and she got probation. But those were black kids. You understand? So th that type of thing goes on for a long time, man. That's why I've never been impressed when I see these white celebrities getting black kids because I know what the fuck they be doing to them. You see Charlize Theron's black kids. Those kids look like they're traumatized. She got the little boy in a dress. Dude. So we can imagine what goes on behind closed doors with these demonic ass folks, man. But do you think it's above a demonic ass white supremacist to put out an insurance policy on a on an adopted child? They don't give a shit about black people. When have they ever gave a shit about black men, women, or children? You think it's above them to not to, to go put a an insurance policy on a kid and all of a sudden that kid had a little accident 
you forgot to take the kid out the car? What they gonna lose? What do they have to lose? They ain't gonna go to jail. You don't, as a, as a person who believes in white supremacy, they know at this point, at this juncture, you ain't going to jail for killing no black person, even if it's a child. If you got a good enough excuse, oh my God, it was an accident. I, I made a mistake and left her in the car all day. My bad. Uh, no crime here. They know nothing is going to happen. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And some people say, well, how come black folks, we got to take care of our kids, our kids, why are they going up for adoption anyway? That's because with black folks, the minute you do something minute, your kid gets taken away. Just like Devontae Hart up there with them white supremacists up there in Oregon. The mom was on drugs, yeah. But he was staying with some relatives, and the reason why they took Devontae and his siblings from the relative is because the mom would come visit. So the, they weren't being abused or anything. But they weren't supposed to be around the mom. And the mom wanted to see her kids so she would go visit. So then they took the kids away and brought them up to some damn demonic, abusive-ass white supremacists. And they knew they were abusing those kids. See, they never took them away from them old abusive-ass white supremacist women. And they knew. There's so many documents of people telling them these babies are being abused. And they never took them away from them. I'd rather have a crackhead raise them than them. Leave them with the fucking crackhead. Some crackheads know how to function. I'm not saying it's cool to smoke crack, but there's some crackhead niggas who know how to function better than these white supremacists. I have several friends whose mom was on crack. They turned out all right. I'd rather the crackhead have them than, than child services. Damn. Yeah, really. Child services, nigga, that's like a slave plantation. They be selling them kids off. Because, man, please, they sell them kids off. Hell yeah, you take them. Uh, hell, the, the black parent might be on crack, but hell, that's better than sending them to a meth head. That ain't no better. We ain't saying crack is good, but I'm saying crack heads are more functional than these demonic white supremacists. Yeah, I heard about that. This white student beat up the black teacher and the white student didn't even get bailed. They didn't. They let him out of jail. He didn't even have to bail himself out. He beat up a black teacher. Damn near beat him to death. Where was that, in Ohio somewhere? You dig? Well, we in here deep. Man, that's heavy, James. Yeah, I'm not saying we should get on the narcotic at all. You know, that's that's definitely not a plus. I mean, I stayed with my friend, a good friend of mine as a, as a teen. I stayed with their family when I first moved out. His mother was a crack addict, and they were selling crack out the house. I was I've lived lived in a crack house before. You did. But my friend, my friend was in high school. I dropped out, but I was staying with them because I didn't have anywhere to stay. So I was staying with my friend and his family. And my friend's mother was a crackhead. And even though she was a crackhead, she was a cool lady. She made sure we ate, made sure kids went, got up and went to school, did everything she was supposed to do in the daytime, but at night she smoked fucking crack. You did? Man, heavy shit, you no? Know? But this is why, you know, we got to have the things... You know, where we have a code, where we have institutions. Yeah, nigga, I lived in a fucking trap house. For real, for real. Hell yeah, nigga, I lived in a band. Nah, it wasn't a band, it was a trap house. It wasn't a band, it wasn't a band, but I lived in a fucking trap house. You did? Man. Yeah. It, it, it destroyed, it did destroy a lot. That was, it was, you know, it was already a damaged community, but that destroyed a lot. But, but, I, but the point I wanted to make is that, it goes back to my earlier point, that those in the dominant society, 
the white supremacists, they are quickly going to regroup and plan their domination. That's what they do. Let's go back to the 60s, like I said, in Vietnam. What's up, Jacqueline? How are you, beloved? In Vietnam, you had a lot of Klan and white supremacist groups, and a lot of white supremacist groups, they started getting on code after Vietnam, because understand, in, in the 60s, the white supremacists felt like they, they took a loss. They lost in Vietnam, they lost during the 1960s civil rights movement, they thought, because now it, it became mandatory to hire black people for certain positions. It became mandatory to allow black people to live in certain neighborhoods. It became mandatory that black folks had to go to certain schools. So to the white supremacists, the world was falling. Got it? To the white supremacists, the world was falling. So they started blaming it's the federal fucking government. It's the government that's doing this to me. The government's supposed to be looking. I'm a white supremacist, and the government ain't looking out for me. The government helping them niggers. So the government, you know why? The government is run by Jews. That's where y'all hear all that. The globalist, the elitist. That's all. That's where all that talk came from. The evil Jewish empires running the American government. So now we got to go after the Jew government. You understand? The Jew-controlled government. That, that's where all that Alex Jones, all those code words, y'all got to understand what they mean. See, when Alex was talking all those code words, the Illuminati, the elitists, we saw those with the third eye open, we saw what he really meant. When they start talking about George Soros and all that, they keep, they keep talking about George Soros. George Soros and Black Lives Matter. You understand? George Soros is a code word for Jews. A shout out, if somebody sent me this, and when I mean stop the violence, stop it against other black people. But don't stop the violence if you're going to protect yourself. Where's Paint Toes? Paint Toes, you in here? Is Paint Toes in here? You dig? So this is that's why they started regrouping, and in the '70s they started to form all of these militia groups, and they started taking aim at the federal government, plotting on taking the government down. And we're seeing the results of that now. The white supremacists they made a deliberate effort effort to infiltrate law enforcement to infiltrate all forms of government. I'm talking about the white extremist. And now the white extremists, they're all the way in the White House right now. They know that Trump is their guy. You dig? So this is why, this is what black people have to keep in mind. You always got to keep this in mind. What's up, Kevin Bender? How are you, family? How are you, family? What's going on, family? You're from North Carolina? All the way from North Carolina. That's what's up. Where's Pink Toes? Pink Toes, you in here? Yeah, I know I heard about Trump talking about his ancestors um, tamed the continent. And let me, let me say this. I, hold on, let me, let me show y'all this picture real quick. Where's this picture? Where's this picture? Hold on. Because there's a picture that I put on my Instagram, and it kind of got some people in a, in a little tissy. Hold on one second. Let me, let me find this picture. Y'all bear with me. There was a, a post on Instagram. This girl, this, she's in North Carolina. Speaking of North Carolina, but I think she's Nigerian. She's a Nigerian girl who lives in North Carolina. And she put up a video of this white dude. I think he was somewhere. He might have been in the UK, somewhere in Europe. And hold on. She put up this picture. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to mail this on. I'm mailing this to myself. Hold on. She put up this video. 
of this dude. This white dude dancing. There's a bunch of black folks dancing, and he, this white dude had a couple of cool little dance moves. And she was saying, and she deleted the post, by the way, because everybody got in her ass. She was like, and speak, she said, what, what did she say? I'm trying to word exactly what she said. She said, on behalf of the African community, I'd like to invite you to the cookout. I'd like to make you an honorary black person. Or some shit, she said, we accept. On behalf of the African community, you, you're invited or some shit. Or we accept you because the guy has some little regular ass dance moves. All right. And folks were clowning her. And she started to kind of snap back talking about, well, y'all American blacks. She started going in on American black people. Well, you American blacks, y'all ain't no better. Y'all be calling folks African booty scratches and all that sort of shit. So there's a lot of people. And let me talk to my African people. My, my global African people, especially people who are over here, you got African parents. Because a lot of times, and I ain't talking about all, because some of my partners, my close partners who roll with me, they have African parents and they are the farthest thing from fucking coon. But you have a lot of people, and I see a lot of bedwintry. We're going to call it what it is. A lot of these women, Especially from Nigeria. Boy, they come over here. I see it more so with the women than men. Now, I see a couple of coon brothers, but really more so, I see a lot of women come over here. Especially from Nigeria. Especially from Nigeria. And boy, they can't wait to get on the fucking coon train and the bedwinch bus. Boy, they just cannot wait to get on that bed, bed that bedwinch bus. Boy, they can't wait to come over here and get next to Zaddy. And say, fuck all the niggers. And not just Nigeria. I mean, we got a lot. People were getting on Issa Rae for her comments. But it's a bunch of Issa Rays out here, family. You understand? This thing is heavy. Oh, let me show this picture. Hold on. All right, let me show you. This is the picture I put on my gram. Of this Nigerian lady. And her dude. And I see this a lot coming from Nigeria, by the way. Let me show this. Hold on. Let me show this picture. Y'all bear with me. All right. Can I do everything on the fly over here? All right. Let me get it together. Where's the picture? Where's the picture? Uh, oh, here it is. All right. Let me check this out. I posted this up. This is the picture I posted up. All right. <laughs> I posted a picture of her and her dude, this lady and her dude. And look, I think they're Nigerian. And I said, what the hell is going on in White Conda? All right? And, you know, she's all cake soaked up. I mean, look at look at the hands. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me look. She got the cake soap face and the Look at the look at her hands. So we see the the hand color don't match the face color. Look look at the hands. You dig? All right. <clears throat> no, this ain't a joke. This is damn real. This is this is dead ass. This is real. And I posted it up. I didn't even say anything about her. I just said, hey, you know what, what's going on in White Conda? Because I'm really clowning him for having that outfit on. And boy, boy, the bedwinches jumped all in my mentions trying to defend this bullshit. The bedwinches jumped in and they were so mad. Why you got to go in on the sisters and the white man? That's basically why you talking about zaddy talk. And most of the women saying that, they had the Nigerian flag in their profile. Most of the women who were complaining had a Nigerian flag like how don't talk about Zaddy. And we're gonna have to be real. If you got offended by that, me posting that picture, let's get off this. Well, how come you don't say nothing about no black men? Bullshit. That ain't what it because I get on coons all day. That's a Bedouin spirit in you because you want a Zaddy. You want you a Zaddy. You want you a Prince Charles. 
So you can be the Meghan Markle. Let's be real. Some of y'all want a zaddy. And you don't want nobody to say nothing about you bedwinching. And I ain't looking. I don't knock people for getting with who you want to get with. I don't. But when you make this some kind of movement, then that's something else. And I'm telling you, the bedwinch mentality is very dangerous. I get on coons all the time, trust me. But when you look at history, bedwinching has taken down empires. When the, let, let's, let's look back at history for a minute. When Cleopatra's ass was Greek and African, he's Greek and African, but she wasn't no Anglo white person. But when Cleopatra was fucking around with the Romans, fucking around with, with Caesar and Anthony, that was the fall of, of, of Africa, of Egypt. And she started fucking around with them, bedwinching with them. That was the fall of Egypt. Egypt hadn't been the same since. You understand? I ain't, I ain't talking about sisters. I'm talking about bedwinches because you had some bad sisters running things in Africa for a long time and they were not bedwinching. You had some badass sisters handling business. All up and down East Africa, you had badass sisters handling business. Sister Candace. Makita, she was out there. That sister had them war elephants fucking folks up. She wouldn't let them Europeans come down there to Africa. Alexander the Great didn't even want to fuck with her. You understand? So you had some badass sisters out there who weren't with the bullshit. But when Cleopatra came in the mix, she was she was a uh, uh, she was mixed. Cleopatra was mixed. You understand? Queen Makita, exactly. Queen Makita. Wasn't taking no shit. Alexander the Great didn't even want none from her. That sister was whooping ass. She, she lost her eye. She had one eye. That was a badass sister. She was whooping ass. Ing zinga. But I'm, I'm still over here in, in, in East Africa. I'm talking about East Africa. But the thing is, with her, there, there were several Cleopatra's. There were. I'm talking about the one who was fucking with, with Anthony and Fucking with them Romans. She opened the door for them to come on. So my, I was just about to say Pocahontas. That's another one. Pocahontas. See, there's a reason why. You notice they love elevating Cleopatra. Whenever they have a person who was the liaison for white supremacist domination of indigenous people, they always prop that person up. They love, they don't prop up Nefertiti. They don't prop up Queen T. They don't prop up um, some of these other sisters who was running things in Egypt. They love propping up Cleopatra because she was the liaison for them to come on in and just start raping Africa, not just Egypt, but Africa wholesale. Pocahontas. They love propping up Pocahontas. They do movies about Pocahontas to this day. Pocahontas was a precursor to bedwinching because Pocahontas, as a child, because she met Captain John Smith as a child, uh, the story of Pocahontas, they were about, the native people were about to kill the white supremacists. And one of the leaders of the white supremacists, Captain John Smith, they were about to kill his ass, which they should have. And the infamous story was that she jumped on him and said, hey, don't kill him. And they spared his life. And then that opened the door for the white supremacists to come in and rape this continent. That opened the door for the English to come on in and just take liberties and rape this spot. That's why they prop up Pocahontas' ass to this day. Pocahontas... The, the, the situation with Captain John Smith, that was when she was a kid. She was like 10 or 11. But even as she got older, she got married to one of the white supremacists. So she was bedwinching it up. You know, they, they paraded her around England. And that just opened the door for them to come on in. They were like, hey, we, we family now. They'll, the white supremacists will marry your ass, put on your garb, put on your outfits. And they'll be like, well, I'm one of you now. Give me some of this land. 
now that I'm one of you. Wait, wait, wait. What's not true, Keon? Wait, wait, wait. What's not true, Keon? Hold on. Let me. Somebody said I said something that ain't true. And I, if I'm saying anything that's factually incorrect, help me out. Keon, what, what did I say that was incorrect, brother? Okay, now I'm freezing. Come on, man. I don't want to freeze up here. Hold on. I can't see nothing. Hold on. Y'all bear with me. Hold on. Hold on one second, because I can't see anything. Y'all bear with me. Hold on. Okay, I can see now. Okay, Keon was waiting on Keon. Somebody said, that ain't true, and I want to know what ain't true. I didn't see you, Keon. Um, Okay, I guess he disappeared. Okay, I don't know where you are, brother. <clears throat> I don't know where you are, but he ain't saying nothing else. Okay. Okay, yeah. He, okay, he ain't saying nothing, so that means he just running his mouth. Niggas is saying shit to be saying it. Your hypothetical narrative come from... Okay, you ain't, okay, you ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying nothing. Okay. Okay, he, he just... It's just a nigga just being oppositional just for the sake of being oppositional. That ain't true, because I said so. It's just that type of shit. Uh, he ain't saying nothing. All right. All right. There was a lag here, so. Okay, it's nothing. He, he ain't saying nothing. Okay. It was, uh, that's just some shit. Let me be contrary to be to get some attention. Yeah, it's, that's the problem. Niggas just be talking to, just to be talking. I'm like, shit, what the hell did I say that wasn't factual? I'm, I'm telling you, the shit I'm saying can can be very well documented. But like I was saying about that bed winching, that bed winching is dangerous, man. That bed winching is dangerous, boy. You open the door to them and you, you think, oh, man, this is about love. Hold on, brother. Why am I freezing? Let me let me do something. I'm freezing and I can't see anything. I don't know why my computer starts lagging sometimes when I'm doing my live shows here. And I hope you guys have 1804 movie, movie 1804, the hidden history of Haiti at 1804movie.com. At 1804movie.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right, let's see where we are here. All right. Okay, I'm looking back. All right. Okay, there we go. So your friend just divorced her zaddy from Miss Trina, and he called her a nigga? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going to happen. What's up, Leah Bridgeforth? How are you, dear? How many of you guys are not following me on Instagram? Because all y'all need to be following me on Instagram. Everybody needs to be following me on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram is Tariq Elite on Instagram for that. Tariq is hustling for that. Okay, Keon, I don't, I don't know what you're saying, brother. I just refreshed my page. And what am I hustling for? What are you talking about? Or are you just in here trolling? What is everybody pressing one for? I'm missing something. Yeah, follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. Oh, yeah, y'all saw the prom picture. My beautiful daughter went on prom. My daughter, Tariq, she went to the prom with her, her friend. That was just her friend. Good little dude. Good little dude. He goes to school with a good little dude. And when I was taking pictures with him, he was a looking he was looking a little shook. But he's a good little dude. Good dude. And the picture is funny that I posted of me and him. People think I, I punked him. No, I didn't. He he you know. You know, he, he's cool. You do, thank you, D. You deleted the key on. Thank you. He was trolling. Thanks for getting him up out of here. You got info? On your parents are African. What are you asking me, brother? 
You had the bow tie. Little fella was clean. My man was clean. Yeah, but damn, we're taking pictures of my daughter and her her date. And then the Uber driver got out the car and got in the damn picture. I'm like, man, get your ass back in the car. You dig? But yeah, my, my daughter had a great time. She's doing her thing. Man. Yeah, I know I tower over people. I'm the biggest fucking hell. You dig? But yeah, you know, I'm just kind of... You know, I want to. I want to see what the motherfucker look like. You know, you you taking my 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 kid out, so I'm gonna take pictures of you. You know, so I can remember what you look like, just in case I need to go holler at you about something. So I took a lot of pictures with me and him, and we got a a, a telepathic understanding. I had to talk to him telepathically. Remember, like I was talking to Keisha Cole in the club, I had to talk to him telepathically. You know, we had to get an understanding. I mean, he was a good dude. Good little dude. Good dude. Okay, Anthony, you're calling me now. You got heavy info. All right, let me turn the phone line on. And this better be some heavy shit. Because niggas be saying they got heavy info and it be some old ass information. Man, I got some heavy shit, nigga. Meat Mill is getting out of jail. Okay, brother. Goodbye. I hate niggas with late ass info. Man, I hate niggas with late ass damn info. And please, y'all, people be sending me stuff. I hate when people send me old stories. We got to be on top of our game. We can't be the latest people in the room. What I think about the Kendrick movie. Yeah, I haven't taken calls in a minute, but I'm going to take one now. Seven seconds. I don't know, it's acting a little slow, but I'm about to take it and see what it does. Alright. Alright. Alright, well, call up, brother. Let me have my man call up. and Let's hear your information. Alright, you know the number? Call up, brother. I want to hear what this deep information is going to be. Man. All right, let's see. Hello, who's calling? Yo, what's up, Tree? What's up? What's your name, man? Anthony. Okay, you're the brother in the room. You said you got some deep info? Yeah. My foster parents are African, bro. And uh, I noticed uh, since, because since I was a little kid, I noticed that they're, they're Somalian. And I noticed that they always had some hatred of Africans and their immigrants to here. And I noticed that when they when they come into Africa, when they coming from Africa to Canada, I'm from Canada, that a lot of times the these white people they come to them and they they be nice to them as shit. And when they see black Americans struggling and talking about how they're getting brutal brutalized and stuff that they think that because nothing's happening to them because the white supremacists are treating them good. So they think that Africans are playing the victim, like the alt-right people say. So what they do is they go back to Africa and they say, yeah, the stereotype is true. African-Americans always are whining about police brutality and racism, and they're basically saying that they never experienced it. So it goes back to Africa and African uh, Africans in Africa. They start to say that, oh yeah, the Africans Americans are lazy people who just whine about racism. That's why when you see Nigerians who come to Afri America, you see they always prosper because the white supremacists they allow them to be better than African Americans. So when they go back to Nigeria, they can tell all of them say that, oh yeah, African Americans are lazy people. They're always whining about victim and that shit. Yeah. When they're the the Nigerians are allowed to prosper, just like how the Democrats allow other minorities to prosper. Yeah. And what I noticed is that my neighborhood, someone from Congo came, and I noticed the second this person from Congo came, 15 people from the Christian church, a bunch of white people from the Christian church, ran up to the house, 
and they gave them a bunch of TVs and shit yeah. so they can uh, force them into Christianity. Mm. So what that does to them is they all become turn the cheek shit, they all become passive, and they all become like slave people because they're all on that the white Christianity bullshit. So I noticed that, and I noticed that I went to Africa myself before, and they saw me as an African American. And when I went there, I got stoned. I literally got stoned because they, those people in Africa, they really do hate you. Well, 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 where, where, where in Africa and did, you, I, where in Africa did huh? you go? Where did you go in Africa? I went to Somalia. My parents are Somalian. Oh, okay. okay. And this, let me tell you something. First of all, Somali people in like in Minnesota, I'm t I want to tell you, African Americans, please. You must keep a good eye on these African, uh, these Africans, Africans, Caribbeans, and Haitians. When these people, uh, the the white supremacists go into Africa and they feed them propaganda, they show them pictures of thugs and all this bullshit, so they'll think a bad stereotype about African Americans, and they actually believe this shit. So when the Democrat Party, their goal is to bring a bunch of minorities into this country so they can make, they can prosper them in, uh, and make, leave the black people at the bottom, the African Americans. So, like, you know, the Democrats are ain't shit. They just want to say minorities, but they're bringing everybody up and leaving the African Americans down. And these people, they hate black Americans. They think black Americans are only basketball players and they say some, they say some fucked up shit. And I noticed that in Af in um, like Nigeria, Nigeria is the capital of cooning. Like they literally have Jesus statues everywhere. Yeah. And Somalia, Somalians, they suck up to uh, the Arabs. The Somalians, they suck up to Arabs. They're not to be trusted. I'm telling you right now, these people will sell you out in a minute like that. They are not to be trusted, people. You must keep a good eye. Some now, of them are now, good. Now, how old are you? Wait, 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 hold on. You, you talking some real shit? Now, how old are you, brother? I'm 16, bro. And this shit is fucked up. Let me tell you another story, bro. So in some, you know how uh, Africans Americans are getting killed in America. Yeah. Somalians, they think, oh, they're just uh, African Americans are just whining. All African Americans are thugs. So then I was listening. So a couple weeks ago, a Somali lady, she got killed by the police. Right. And I told my step parents, I said, hey, why are you whining right now? Why are you t why are you talking bad about the police? You said the police are good people. I told them, when Philando Castile in Minnesota got killed, none of y'all gave a shit. Mm. But when a Somali gets killed, not all of you want to say black love and shit. I said, fuck you niggas, man. Like, Damn. you people only care when you people get killed. Mm. But when African Americans get killed, you don't give a shit. So I'm trying to tell you, the Somali people are one of the most selfish people. If you go to Minnesota and you ask a black American in Minnesota, these people, they don't want to get, they don't want to get around other people. They only give a shit about their own people. Which African Americans should do, because African the problem with African Americans is the liberals have trained black people, African Americans, to fight for everybody else, but they don't fight for themselves. Mm. Like illegal immigration. African Americans should not be fighting for anybody else. Illegal Im immigration affects African Americans. They should tell other people to hold their own nuts and tell all these people who come to this country, like the Africans, they come to this country, they think you're below them. You look at Nigerians, everybody in the comment section knows. These Nigerians, they call you Akata, they call you all this shit. Mm. Even Somalians, they have their own terms to disrespect African Americans. So they come into your country, they take up all the benefits, they send back to their country, and they bring more people to shit on you. And you know who these people will be used? The white supremacists will use these people as co-intel agents. The mm -hmm. co-intel agents are going to be the new Africans who come in. Because these Africans, these Nigerians especially, they'll sell you out in a heartbeat. They will use these Africans to join your organizations. And when these Africans join your organizations, you'll be naive and you'll think they're your brother. But instead, they're working for the white supremacists. They just have blackface on. These Nigerians, they all believe in some white Jesus. They make a statue of white Jesus every single day. They just blackface. Like these bed in Nigeria. Nigeria is the capital of Cooney, bro. I'm just yeah. trying to tell you that. Yeah. Be careful, yeah. you African Americans yeah. there, because these people, they will sell you out. They will pour you in your jobs. They're not. No. They're not to be trusted. No, 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 no. Slow down. Trust. Slow down. I feel, I feel you now, now, bro. Now, are you? Do you live in Canada now? Where do you live now? I live in Canada. This shit is racist as fuck, bro. I'm yeah. telling you, bro. I believe Canada that. Canada is fucked up. I know. They try to act like Canada ain't, ain't got no Canada's racism. Canada is the most racist piece of shit place because there's no black people here. Yeah. It's just Africans or coons. So yeah. it's, it's a fucked up place, you know. Now you it's said we're in the... Black Americans to unify only... It's like you have to be safe. Only black Americans right now. And if there's some good African American, you must... Like Trump said, you must vet the people. You must see what they thinking because if they on that white Jesus shit, tell them get out of here because you can't trust people like this because they like these Africans, they say they love the police and shit. So I'm just letting you know, you, you gotta know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Now you said, um, you said you were adopted. Yeah, I'm a foster kid. 
no, your your parents, your your adopted parents, they they're from Somalia. Did they? they yeah, yeah, they're refugees, man. Because Somalians, they know how to they 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 make fake government shit and they come to the country. I'm telling you something else. Somalis are the biggest welfare people. There's a stereotype that saying that African Americans are welfare. We know it's white women, but these Somalis, well, they know all the scams of welfare. So I'm just trying to let you know that too. It's, that's a lie. They say African Americans are on the welfare. It's these Somalis and Africans too. That's no joke. Now let me ask you this. Now, how old were you when you were adopted? By the way, I don't know. I just, I just, I have a different name than all of them. So I found out that these, because these people treat me like shit. So I'm trying to escape this shit, but these people are pieces of shit, man. I don't like them. Oh, oh, so are you still you still staying with them? Yeah, they took all my shit, yeah. but I'm trying. I'm gonna be trying to get out of here. But these people, they're some selfish motherfuckers, man. They 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 bad people because they believe in Islam and shit. They, I'm not trying to disrespect Islam, but they some they some crazy people. Are you okay? I mean, look, are you physically every? Are you not in any kind of danger? Are you? I'm going to escape, but I, I'm just kind of in the meantime fighting for my money back so I can get my shit out of here, but these people are fucked up, man. They, they, I have some play haters, man. They want to be, because I identify myself as an African-American because they hate me, so I'm kind of in a little civil war with these people, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to try to get out of this shit, but I'm just trying to tell you people, I really feel for you guys, because these people, when you get killed on the street, they will not give a shit about you, and they will join the white man. I'm just trying to tell you people... These people are black faced. These people are co tell agents. So I just want you people to don't talk too much. Don't talk about a lot of things too much around them. So uh, now, be safe. But, these people. Speak. Yes, yes, yes. But now, I just, well, you're because now we're concerned about your safety, brother. We want to make sure you're good. And this is real talk. You're not. Are they, are they abusing you or doing anything like that to you? I uh, they they used to, but now they just took my money. Now, these what, people are welfare bums. They're just now. Where'd you get money? Where, where'd you get money from? What money? Money from where? I work for it. I use my money to escape. I was gonna go to go to my uncle. My uncle, I don't even know if he's my uncle, but I was gonna go to him because these people are just fucked up people. Do they do so they, they have they, any they, other do they, they have do, wait, 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 brother, wait, wait, slow down. Do they, brother, slow down, slow down. Do they have any other foster children? I love it. I just I just have like two two thousand they have. I just wanna get that back. They stole that shit from me. No, 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 brother. Listen, do they have any other foster children? No, I'm the only one. Okay. I'm the only one with a different name. Okay. Okay. Now, what, what's your name, by the way? Anthony. Anthony. You got an Instagram, Anthony? Uh, I, I kind of, I don't have that anymore. They took my phone. Okay. Well, I'm see. on the home phone. Uh, yeah. But do you have an email or something so I can talk to you later? Yeah, yeah. You got my email. is info at TariqElite.com. Info at TariqElite.com. So I'm trying to verify to make sure you ain't just bullshitting. You understand? Okay, okay. I'll, 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 I'll email you later, but I just want to, I, I care about you guys, and I just want to tell you guys, and please, African Americans, please stop falling for these Democrat liberals, man. They're playing you like crazy. Well, you're saying the Democrats, wait, so are, are you, do you, <laughs> wait, wait, do you consider yourself a conservative? No, I'm, I mean, I, I don't like the Democratic Party because they keep using black people. I understand that, but that's the thing that's throwing me off. You keep bringing up the Democrats. And the liberals, and I'm always. No, no, I know what you're trying to say. I know a lot of coons right now. Right. What they're trying to, they're trying to hide their coon as conservatism. I know what you're trying to say. Right. I'm not, I'm not that. I'm for black, black Americans to win. Yeah, that's why I need to verify you because you done brought yeah, up the Democrats. Yeah, I know Democrats. what you're trying to say because a lot of coons are trying to hide their cooning as conservatism. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, but because like, yeah, you, you, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, but there's a lot of key words that I hear that that that's real Kanye-ish. Yeah, that's why I need to verify what's going on with you. And you, you ain't got, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you ain't got social yeah, media. You ain't got no Instagram. That's funny style. I ain't never met a sixteen year old who ain't got no Instagram. So there's some funny shit about you that I need to, I need to verify. I ain't trying to blow you off completely, but I'm saying I need to verify what's happening with you. I can give you my info. I can email you if you want. No doubt. Email me. Let me know because you, this, you might be the real deal. Something might be going on. I just want to make sure if you're the real deal. Ain't nothing yeah. happening with you where you're in danger. Yeah. You dig? But yeah, no. I just want, but I just want you African Americans because I don't like you people getting getting played because it's it's not time to be playing around. So just know who's your friend and who's your enemy. You have no friends. Do you have a Facebook? I don't have Facebook. I have email and Gmail. You ain't got Twitter, bro. I have Twitter, but I have like no followers. All right. What's your Twitter? So let me get my Twitter. We all gonna follow you right now. You're about to get about a thousand right now. What's it? I'm going to go.
Gotcha. Um, Anthony's. Let me get my chart. Okay. Waiting on Anthony's social media. Waiting to see what's popping off with this thing. And Anthony, are you in school Anthony. right now, by the way? Pardon? Are you in school right now? No, I was dealing with some, because I'm telling people, a lot of people think Canada is some old peace shit. This, this people, there's a bunch of Asians here, and these motherfuckers are racist, racist as fuck. So right now, I, I, I kind of got in the beef with the principal because she was treating me like a fucking criminal and shit. So I left that school. I'm, I'm about to go to my uncle soon. So mm -hmm. All right. I'm not currently at that age. I'm just doing online study and reading books. Okay. All right. So well, let's, get, let's get back yeah, to it. I'm just telling there's a stereotype. Canada is racist as fuck. Don't believe that shit. All right. Let's get it's that racist. Twitter. Let's get that Twitter, brother. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get that Twitter and see what's popping. Yeah, I, I know. Y'all caught that. My, my man said he, he ain't got no phone, but I ain't got a charger. See, you, 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 a lot of shit you saying ain't adding up. You said you ain't had no phone, but now you got a charger. You dig? I don't have a number. Hey, bro, I, hey, bro, I don't really need help. I'm not trying to ask for help or something if you think like that. Yeah, I'm trying to see what's going on with you, brother. You said you didn't have a phone, but now you you got you need to charge it. So you're getting caught up in some lies, brother. I need to see what's going on with you, Anthony. You dig? I'm not trying to be like that, bro. All right, but you, 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 it's sounding real fishy coming from you, brother. See? You you might be, you, you know, something ain't happening. Something ain't right. You ain't got no Twitter. You ain't got no Instagram. You, you did. And there's a reason for that. You want to tell you the reason? No, bro. I just want to know if you got a social media. You, you did? Yeah, I, I used to, but there's a reason I don't have at the moment. All right, it's brother. All, I, all right, I, Anthony. I got to let you go, brother. You, 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 got caught, I had to, you, you got caught in a lie. You said you didn't have a phone. Then you said you got to go get your charger. You see? Oh, with that one, I don't know. I don't know. S something ain't right with that one. So you got to watch that. He was doing a lot of fast talking, but I'm picking up on his little keywords. He's saying, a, you know, he was, he was mixing in some real shit with a little bullshit. You got it? Take the phones off of it, all right? All right? My man kept backpedaling too much, so something ain't right with that. You know, basically, he was saying a bunch of stuff that we say, but then when I started asking particular questions, boy, he started backsliding. Hey, man, what's with the... He, he, y'all didn't y'all probably didn't catch that. He kept talking about Democrats and liberals. He said that about four times. I'm like, okay. The first time he said it, I'm like, uh. But then he kept saying the Democrats and the liberals. Yeah, he he was doing he was doing a, uh, he was mixing in some of that Ben Shapiro sounding shit. You know, so sound like this is my this might be a kid who had been coached by some white supremacists, and he kept saying. You people. You dig? The dude kept saying, you people. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I need some verification. Then when we tried to get some verification, he ain't got no Twitter. He ain't got no Instagram. He ain't got no Facebook. Oh, I, I lost my phone. I ain't got my phone. They took my money. You dig? So something ain't right with dude. Something ain't right. My man then got caught in a couple of little lies. Just because, and that's another thing. Don't be fooled by somebody saying some, some real shit. People talking fast and saying some real shit, and then they mix in some, some bullshit. I'm like, uh-oh, I didn't, wait a minute, because now you're tainting everything else you're saying. You dig? You got to watch the white supremacists. Is what they'll do. They'll get a black person. Yeah, he started overselling this shit. He he used too many code words too much. He kept, you people can't trust the, the liberals, man, because what the white supremacists will do, they will act like they're concerned about black issues. 
The white supremacists will pretend that they're so concerned about what's happening with black folks and be like, hey, y'all shouldn't support the liberals. Hey, man, those Democrats don't want nothing for you, man. Those Democrats are just as racist as everybody, man. That way, we don't vote, and they'll, okay, we'll just get our guy, we'll get the Republican in, which I, it don't matter to us one way or another. So that's their way of getting us to not support a liberal candidate. But something was funny style would do. Now he kept using liberal and Democrat too much. Come on, man. Y'all need to stop messing with the liberals. Y'all need to stop messing with the Democrats. It's the Democrats. It's the liberals, man. That's a motherfucker that's been coached. That dude has been coached. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's some type of Cointel Pro agent. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a Cointelpro agent. You dig? I would not be surprised. He said he considers himself African American. But I wouldn't be surprised if dude. Now I'm listening to him, but I'm 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 waiting on him to stop talking so I can really get some more information. Then he starts back, but he, he backpedaled too much. Uh, I ain't reaching. Nigga, that's the problem. We don't reach enough. And he was saying some real good shit. I'm listening, but I'm like, let me ask some questions to see what's going on with him. You dig? But he was going in a little bit too much. He was building up this whole thing about how some of these Africans are coons, and he said something that was a lie. I was kidding. A lot of shit he was saying... I was, I was, he was saying some real shit, but he was mixing it in with garbage. He was like, man, when I went to, man, I went to Africa and they stoned me, man. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. That's bullshit. They didn't stone you. You dig? He was overselling the bullshit. See, a lot of y'all, y'all were like, oh yeah, he's spitting some real shit. I'm listening. I'm like, okay. I'm picking up on some of the shit he's lying about. It didn't stone you in no fucking Africa, dude. Let's stop it. Man, they stoned me, man. Just because I was a black American. They hate us. They hate us over there in Africa. I'm listening. That's a lie. That's not true. That's that's not true. I know that ain't true. I've been over there. I, I, I go to Africa all the time. That's bullshit. So I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm like, let, let him get his bullshit out. I'm like, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 see what he says when I ask about his social media. Yeah, some of the shit he was lying. Y'all didn't catch that. That sounds like they got an agent. That dude has been trained by some white supremacists. They didn't train him and gave him some keywords to say so he can try to get in good with us. Man, yeah, Africa, they can't they hate y'all over in Africa, man. That way we're supposed to be like, okay, we ain't gonna go to Africa. No. Man, they call us all types of names. Man, Africans, they really hate African Americans. They be looking at the propaganda. They really, really, really hate you. Bullshit. They love me in Africa. Yeah, I caught up on that bullshit. I said, how old were you when you were adopted? I don't know, man. I just know I got a different name. I mean, he, I mean, you see how quickly shit was throwing him off? You were adopted. How old were you when you were adopted? Oh, man, I don't know, man. I, you know, I got a different name. You dig? Yeah, well, he couldn't answer a straight question. Notice that? He thought it was, you thought you were slick, Anthony. I don't know who got, who put you up to all that, but I see the bullshit, brother. Yeah, y'all didn't catch that. He was talking, and that's another thing, family, I want y'all to understand. This is some street game. When a motherfucker's talking too fast... Always go on alert. I done told y'all about that before. When somebody is just really talking very fast, that's a red alert right there. I already knew something was going on with you. Hold on one second. I'm freezing up. Y'all bear with me. I'm freezing up here. Hold on. Hold on. 
I'm freezing and I can't see nothing. Hold on. Hold on one second. Y'all bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Because I can't see nothing. All right. All right. I can't see nothing in the chat room right now. Hold on. Give me more. Okay, y'all bear with me. Bear with me for a minute. My whole joint and froze up. I gotta figure out a way to cleanse my computer so my joint don't freeze up like this. Damn. I'm trying to log. Y'all bear with me, guys. I can't read anything in the chat room right now. I'm going to probably have to have two computers up sometime when I do the show. So I'm not freezing like this. I'm going to start doing that. All right. Y'all bear with me. All right. Okay. Let me see where we are. All right. We're still in here heavy. Okay, so now, where y'all at? Okay, I can see you now. Okay, I can see you guys now. I couldn't see y'all for a minute. But, um, yeah, like I said, Odu, my guy was talking a little too fast. He was talking way too fast. That's number one. That was a red flag. He was talking fast. He was using too many white supremacist talking points, whenever they start talking about some liberals and Democrats, man, them Democrats be using you guys, guy, bro. The Democrats be, be using you. The Democrats, man, they're against you. They be bringing people against you, man. There's those Democrats. Anytime y'all hear somebody talking about the Democrats and the liberals, always go on alert. Always go on alert, man. So again, my man... His motives were questionable. I understand you 16, sometimes you talk fast, but when it's time to slow it down and answer some simple questions, all of a sudden he start backpedaling. Well, how old were you when you were adopted? I don't know, bro. I, I, I just got a different last name. You got any other siblings? They got all my money, bro. I mean, he starts, he's, he's stalling to come up with an answer. Where's your, um, what's your Instagram? Oh, man. I mean, they took my phone, bro. All right, what's your Twitter? Oh, let me get my phone charger. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, all right. All right, brother. Something ain't right. <clears throat> yeah, and then he said he got stoned. Somebody stoned him through rocks at him. Come on, bro. That's bullshit. Bullshit. And here y'all are. Y'all need to get him in here in colors. Come on now. Come on. What school you go to? You go to school? Man, I got into it with my principal, man. And then he's trying to make up a reason. Because I'm about to ask him what school he go to. And he's already backpedaling. He's backpedaling too much. But he got stoned. What, this ain't the damn the 1100s. They don't stone nobody. They ain't going to stone you. Yeah, did y'all you all really believe this nigga went to Somalia and got stoned? Somebody threw rocks at him. He was overselling his bullshit. That's a motherfucker who ain't never been to Africa. He ain't never been nowhere near Africa. All right? That's some shit that a white supremacist will say. They always have some stupid ass narrative of what's going on in Africa. Yeah, hey, bro, I got a friend who went to Africa, man. So they, they sick hyenas on him, dude. They always got some stupid-ass narrative about Africa. Hey, man, I went to Africa, and me and my bro, we got raped, dude. We got raped by all the fucking black dudes over there, dude. You didn't get stoned, man. Nobody threw rocks at you. That's bullshit. Sell that to somebody who don't know no better. Who stone? You got stone? Who are you, nigga? Jesus? You dig? 
So something ain't right there. We, we, we smell the bullshit. And then when we called him on the whole phone lie, then he tried to switch it up again. I, I, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear the lies. You dig? That's funny. That is hilarious. Yeah, he'd be dead. Somebody stone him. Somebody gonna stone you in in Africa? Man, yeah, he was talking hella fast. I had to slow him down. He was getting out all his bullshit talking points. Latino boy, you want to call in? All right, let me open the phone lines again. All right. The phone lines are about to be opened up. I have you call. Somebody else call in because I haven't taken calls in a minute. Yeah, bro. It's fucking, man. You go to Africa, man. They fucking coons, man. They fucking blackface coons. They coons. They don't like us, man. They come over here. They coons. They don't. They fucking hate black Americans, man. They fucking hate you, man, because the Democrats let them over, man. It's the liberals who let them come over and take over, man, and put you on the bottom, dude. And I went over there, man, and they fucking stoned me, dude. They stoned me, threw rocks at me, man, and they put stuff, to, they stuffed things in my ass, dude. They put it all in my fucking ass, and man, they don't fucking like us over there, man. All right, dude, what's your Instagram? I don't fucking have one, dude. I lost my phone. And they stoned my phone, dude. All right, what's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Trey? Hold on. Let me turn down Trey. Right. Hey, what's up, Trey? Hey, man, what's up? What's your name? What's your I'm name? The, uh, black... I'm the black nerd attention detective box. I don't remember, brother. What's, okay. what's on your mind? What's on your mind? I don't remember, but what's on your mind? Um, I was just um, calling up to basically say I uh, have access to you know, some certain clips. Like, there's this one YouTube channel where they talk about, it's like a gathering they do and they actually talk about most of the stuff that you talk about from the standpoint of how they link up how they flip i'm saying their organization the patriotic name they even talk about this stuff i actually archive their videos this one dude goes under the name immortal ideas and he that's all he does he constantly goes round about it's like a session they do like every time on youtube they talk for hours and hours about what to do next Okay. And it's like everything that you say, they really, you know what I'm saying, bring to light. For example, Richard Spencer, um, I guess it was some lawyer who wouldn't represent him. And one of the guys said, you know what? This is why we don't need a leader. This is why we don't need a leader. Another guy, when concerning the Confederate flag, I think he lives over in New Jersey. I'm going to have you call back, brother. I don't know what this brother's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. All right. I don't know what you're talking about, brother. Y'all y'all got to kind of get to the point. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. When y'all call up, I, I don't want to sit around and just kind of wait to see what the hell you're talking about. I don't know who he's talking about, nor do I know what he's talking about. I don't even know. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, what's up, man? It's what? uh Ed. Andy? No, Ed. Ed. Ed from Boston. Eddie from Boston. Yeah. How you doing, Eddie? What's on your mind, brother? Yeah, man, I was just uh, thinking about this, um, the ISIS papers, Francis Fresh Wilson, yeah. Francis Fresh, Chris Wilson. Yeah. But when she was talking about uh, how white people are uh, jealous of black people, basically it's like uh, envy. Yes. They, uh, they basically look at our skin color and they basically want to be black. And they... Uh, call our skin color like, you know, how it's disgusting and nasty, but it's really like um, deep down inside, they only say that because it's like a, a, it's a desire. Yeah, that, yeah that's true. Well, thank you so much, brother. All right. <clears throat> All right. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all got to get to the point. I got it. Brother, you calling up explaining Dr. Wilson's book. I, I know. I know I knew Dr. Wilson. Yes, brother. I know and the author. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay. Let's see what this is. Alright, hello. Hi, is this Tyree? Yeah, who is this? Yeah, how's it going, brother? This is Marcus out in Orange County, California. Marcus from Orange. You sound like that purgatory Christ dude. From back in the tank. Oh man, I ain't even like that, brother. All right, so Mark, your name is Marcus. 
Yes. And you're in, where, where in Orange County are you? Uh, Mission Viejo area. Okay, there you go. So what's on your mind, brother? Man, I got to talk to you, Tyreek. So I moved out here after I got my after I got my degree. I got this roommate, brother. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, brother. Why, hold on, hold on, brother. Why are you breathing hard, brother? Why are you breathing hard, man? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to call him outside barbecuing right now. I called you. I didn't think you were going to answer Okay, but just the breathing of hard. The, that breathing. Without it, there's no love. The breathing, brother. The breathing is throwing me off. But go ahead, brother. So you, you did what? Always. So I get home from work every day, and I hear this brother, this white boy, he's always listening to Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones. I'm going to be honest with you, brother. I don't know what to do. Oh, your roommate? Yes, sir. So you stay with this. He, he, he's the white guy, right? Yes, he is. Every time I come home, he's listening to some Ben Shapiro, Alex Jones. I walk in the door, and he pauses it. Well, damn. I think he, I think he knows I'm on to him. Okay, well, damn, you living with a suspected white supremacist, dude, and I would say that you should do whatever you need to do to get up out of there. That's a dangerous situation. They might do something to your ass. You did? I'm not worried about him doing anything to me, brother, but you know what the crazy part is? He just won't ever debate me. When I bring it up, he was trying to bring up the bullshit Obama did. Right, but uh, nigga, you got bigger problems, man. I mean, you, you living with a suspected white supremacist, so they can say anything about you, brother, and they got a whole system on their side. So I would say, man, you just need to start looking at ways to kind of get your own spot or get another roommate or something. How many folks live there with you guys? I just mean it, brother. Okay. All right, well, get on up out of there, man. Get on up, get all your little bubble bath and aroma beads and all your shit. Pack that up and go and get up out of there. Man. Thanks for the call, brother. Okay. I'm going to have a little spirit on it, but it's all right. All right. Yeah, it sounds like they got going on, something going on in there. Let me, let me, okay. I hate that Skype. You can't really mute the calls, but yeah. Yeah, it sounds like my man had something going on over there that might not be about a roommate situation. That might be that nigga's boo thing. <laughs> that nigga, that ain't no roommate. That might be Zaddy. <laughs> Uh oh, I should have asked him, my man down in Mission D8, VA. He might be up there living with white supremacist Zaddy. That's why he don't want to leave. All right. Uh oh, brother. <laughs> that nigga's going all right up in your asshole. <laughs> man, man, man. It's my dude. That's why when I said, hey, leave, he said, he act like he didn't want to leave. Like, that nigga sound like he don't want to go nowhere. You notice that when I said, well, maybe you got to leave. I mean, he didn't even entertain that idea of leaving. So I'm thinking that's this white zaddy boo thing. This thing ain't trying to leave. That nigga standing in the doorway like Jennifer Hudson. No, 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 no way. <laughs> I'm living without you. That nigga's like dream girls. He's standing in the door with his booty open. And I'm telling you, I'm not going. <laughs> he done found him a zaddy white supremacist. And zaddy's listening to racist shit and having white supremacist pillow talk. Zaddy is like, give me some of that nigger booty. <laughs> Don't talk to me like that, Steven. <laughs> oh, Zaddy is having gutter sex with him, calling him all types of names. <laughs> oh, yeah, open that ass up, you big nigger buck. Don't call me that. <laughs> you know I'm sympathy. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Don't say that to me. It's Black History Month. You dig? Zaddy's calling him all types of derogatory names during sex. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Zaddy makes that nigga dress up like Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Get out there and say your lines. This is, de de this is degrading. Get out there and say your lines. Okay. All's my life I have had to fight. Are you happy now, Steven? 
He make that nigga dress up and role play in slave clothes. <laughs> his his white daddy name is Stephen. My goodness. That nigga is a plantation buck. Man. <laughs> Lord, that's why sometimes I don't even want to answer the calls, man. Man, man, man. What the people I got calling up tonight. God damn. <laughs> He sound like big old nigga too, don't he? The, the dude who called him, he sound like a big old juicy nigga, big old nigga. <laughs> Marcus, come on, man. I want you need to tell the truth. That's your boo thing. You in a you in a relationship with dude. I ain't, nobody's knocking you for your lifestyle, brother. You our brother. We love you. You know you still our brother. But brother, let us know if you in a situation where we can help you. That's the thing, black folks. I don't want y'all living in secrets. You in danger. Let us know you in danger so we can help you. Black folks be suffering in silence and having secrets and trying to talk around shit. Let the community know, look, look, nigga, just say, hey, you're dating this white dude. He's You're kind of scared he might be racist. You need some help. Nigga, we'll get you some help. We can you know, bring you some band-aids for the whips on your back or whatever. I'm scared to take more calls. Let me let me take some more calls. Y'all scaring me. But this nigga's a battered husband. We need the He Too movement. He's getting battered by white Zaddy. Zaddy is battering this dude. That's our brother. I don't, I don't care about his, his sexual preference. That's our brother, and our brother needs help. There's a, a, a white man in there doing things to this brother. Steven, that deal, though, hurts. <laughs> I don't like it when you use it that way. <laughs> speak out, man. Speak your truth and speak out against injustice. They got a dildo with spikes on it. Hurt. That hurts, Stephen. <laughs> this is not love, Stephen. This is a, a Bruce. This is a Bruce, Stephen. I don't like where this relationship is going. I'm still human, Stephen. I, I, that's the kind of conversation this nigga's having with Stephen. Steven's doing shit to him. So let us know, brother, so we can help you out. Don't talk in code, act like that's a roommate. Steven is doing shit to you. He's reading white supremacist literature. That's why this nigga was breathing hard. Steven just got through doing something to him. That nigga was probably hanging up somewhere. That nigga had him hung up like a big slave. He was dialing with his feet. Tyree, Tyree, is this Tyree? Shh, I got a whisper, because Steven might hear me, you know. Damn. <laughs> Brother, if you need help, we'll help you. Oh, Lord, who is this? What's up? Who is this, man? Who is this? Hey, this is Tyree Barnes. How you doing, Tariq? Tyree Barnes. How you doing, brother? Good, good. First off, I just want to say uh, much respect to you and the entire chat room this evening. What's, what's it in? And uh, I just got a cup. I'm sorry. What city are you in, brother? St. Louis, Missouri. There you go. What's on your mind? I just wanted to touch on some things. I just, I, I'm always amazed by your knowledge on everything and much respect for keeping us all woke. You know, uh, I, really, I personally appreciate that, man. I love that radio podcast you did, breaking down that Miami show that you did when you were out there in Miami. I love that. I've watched it a lot. What was I talking that's about? That's one of my most favorite. What was I talking about? Where you're breaking down those, those bed winches, those coons trying to. Talk about those school shootings, oh, you know, yeah. and saying how we benefit from them, the alliance and all that. I love that show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very good show we did down there. Yeah, so. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, what's up. And I'd like to see, I just want to call and say, I'd like to see guys like Kaepernick and all these NFL guys kind of go behind the scenes. Maybe even get with you, get some of those millions together and get some kind of scheme going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So we can get something done on the streets. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Get something really done. Absolutely. You know, just get Get away from the, the limelight. Get something done behind the scenes on the slide, and get something coordinated. You know, yeah, so we can I, get this get this rolling, get our protection going, get yes, it, you know militarized if we have to. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Man. Thank you for the call, brother. Yes, indeed. All right. Brother. Okay. Who's this now?
All right. What's up? Who's calling? Hello, Tariq. What's going on, my brother? This is Robbie Blue, man. Robbie Blue. How you doing, fam? I'm doing all good, man. I'm, I'm calling from Atlanta via Texas. I want to say, man, you got me scared, boy. You be having me rolling, man. Man. If man. niggas got a lot with you, you make a puppet out of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 <laughs> when man. that puppet comes, it's over. Man. Now, what I wanted to say to you was, man, I know on your, on your platform, you're always saying, you know, replace white supremacy with a system of justice. And I was thinking about it, that basically the hierarchy right now is like a pyramid, you yeah. know, with the rich at the top and at the bottom, you know, it's it's mainly uh, a lot of us and even some other minority groups. With that being said, I wanted to say, with all these empty prisons that they're building all across the country, do you feel that if we don't turn that pyramid at least into a diamond and expand the middle class, uh, that eventually they're going to be filling up those prisons with us? Because I feel like they're importing a caste system. I've noticed that a lot of people, um, even if I'm just around, you know, other family members or people that have interactions, you know, a lot of people are getting into this mindset, kind of like that other caller was saying, even if they were trolling that, uh, you know, African Americans are whiners and so forth. So some people are used to working for seven bucks an hour, you know what I mean? And thinking that that's a come up in America because maybe they came from a third, a third world country. And in the process of doing that, I'm thinking that it could neutralize any of the efforts that we're making in mm -hmm. terms of, of maintaining our civil liberties. Do you feel that maybe that with the imp import of immigrants that it's going to basically uh, shrink the middle class and therefore they're going to start rolling back the clock and criminalizing everything that we do just to film up, fill up those jails yeah, and get free labor. But the thing is, man, it, there's, there's no black middle class. I mean, we got one class. I mean, we, get all, we get caught up in class and all black people from every class gets treated the same. And when you said other minority groups, I mean, what other minority groups are comparable to black people? Oh, no. What I'm saying is they're importing other minorities, quote unquote. That's using their lingo. Okay. You know, we say we, everybody needs to hold their own nuts. Right. But what I'm saying is they're going to use them as a buffering system to basically fuck us over. You get what I'm saying? They're they're saying hey, brother, why are y'all crying? Brother, you, you, you know, you 50 nobody years else too is late. over here complaining. Brother, huh? you 50 years too late. They've been doing that since the 60s. They started importing all of these immigrant groups in the 60s. So you 40, right. 50 years too late. They've been fucking us over in favor of the immigrants. The immigrants come over uh, I, and they put in, right. they've been putting them in positions on top of us. You understand? Right. I guess what I'm saying is, and that's why I look to brothers like you for guidance, because I feel that the end game is here. Like, I think yeah. I finally see the end game. The end game is, okay, you know what? Now we're just going to basically continue to neutralize. And like I say, every time there's these police beatings and shootings, I look in the comment sections, they'll be... Hispanics making comments, there'll be Asian making comments, and people be defending white supremacy. Yes. So it lets me know that you got, you know, like you say, we got to be on code, and we got to really understand that this is not a game. So I won't stay long-winded. Yeah. I appreciate what you're doing. And if we get a prehistoric uh, hood rat puppet, nigga, I'm going to die. Man, you know what I'm saying? Man, man. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for the call, brother. All man. right. All right. Peace. But um, as far as that, let me, let me stop calling for a Skype is so janky, the calls be coming in on top of calls. It's real janky right now. But, but yeah, my man, you're talking about something that's obvious as shit. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Black folks, we start getting shit 50 years later. Now we getting it? Man, we, we 50 years late. The immigrant groups, they've been coming over here shitting on us. We, we wait too long to start getting shit. This has been happening for a long time. Starting, they ain't about to start nothing. They've been doing that. They've been doing that. And these other so-called immigrant groups, and I don't use minority, we should stop. Let me tell y'all something. The terms we should stop, we should stop using three terms. There's three words or three terms that black people tonight should stop using. We should stop using the term minority. I've been told you about that. Because you have white supremacists who claim to be minority. You should stop using people of color. Please stop using that term. That's a dismissive term that really undermines black people and make our struggle comparative to everybody else when it's not. We are not people of color and other so-called people of color, they are not comparable to us. 
we need to stop. We say people of color because we're scared of saying black. We understand that any time we acknowledge blackness, there's an automatic backlash. We understand that from the dominant white society. Anything black and positive, there's a, a backlash automatically. Whenever we talk about blackness, specifically, we can feel the backlash. Even if it's unsaid, we can feel it. So we try to water it down. We go out of our way to start talking about people of color, minority. And if, if we do say black, we say black and brown. Even if we do say black, we got to put a chaser on it, black and brown. So it ain't too black. There's a little brown mixed in. That's because we're scared. Black people are scared. But that's not the third term we should stop using. Some people say black and brown. We should definitely stop using that term. Minority. Well, I'll put four. Minority, black and brown, people, people of color. The fourth term we should stop using is African American. We should stop using the term African American. I'm going to say that again. We shouldn't use the term African American. We shouldn't use that term. You notice I don't use that term. When you listen to me talk, I say black. I say black American. But y'all rarely hear me say African American. I, I say black. And there's a reason why. A couple of reasons. And brother Claude Anderson he, he talked about this too in his book. We should also say either black American or native black. There's a reason why. It's because you have people who will come over from Africa and they're African American, but they don't identify with us. Charlize Theron can call herself an African American. And that has happened before. There have been white people from Africa come over here and sue to get benefits as an African American. So you have white people who were born in Africa. If they come over here, they can claim to be African American. Or you have people who immigrate from Africa who didn't go through what we went through here and they can call themselves African American. That's what just they got Jesse Jackson to push that African American thing. Because our experience here is completely unique to any other persons on the planet. Nobody on the planet has had an experience as black Americans. We have a very distinct and unique history. Another reason why we shouldn't say African American is because many people who are classified as black are actually mixed in with Native American. Many black people who are called black, are actually native to this land. A lot of people, there's a running joke about people saying, well, I'm mixed with Indian. The truth is, many black people are mixed with Indian because many Indians, Native Americans, were reclassified as black. Do y'all understand this? I want, This is something that we really need to get deep about. And I study this stuff heavy. When I, I, there's documents on this. There are many documents where a Native American, when they started to give out land and, and resources, when, when they started giving out money and land and all this self stuff, they specifically reclassified the real dark Native Americans as freedmen. You understand? And that's when all the fake, bullshit-ass $5 Indians came around talking about, hey, I'm 185th Native American. This is why all of the Native Americans you see now ain't real Native Americans. They lily damn white, and none of them don't have a drop of Native American. Very few of them have real Native American ancestry. Black people have been here longer than any other group besides the English and some Spanish. But even before the English, we were still here. So we've been here longer than all these groups. You understand? You don't think for a minute we've been here 400 plus years on record, off record before that. 
and we didn't mix up with these folks, the native people here, and understand when when Columbus and all of the European explorers came here, the early ones, read their records. They would say how dark the people were when they got here. They would say they looked like the Africans. They looked like the Africans. They looked like the Ethiopians. They looked like the East Indians. That's why they called them Indians, because they were so damn black. You understand? These people talking about they were Native American, I challenge you to find a photograph before the year 1900 of a white damn Native American. It didn't exist. It just didn't exist, dude. And they know this. The old Macs, all these people were here, documented. I mean, they just went on and on about how black the people were. They looked like Ethiopians. They black, they dark, they African, the Moors. So many of us are native to this land. There were some people brought over, but many people were native to the land. What they did, they didn't have to bring everybody on a ship. They brought a lot of people, but not to the degree that we think. You understand? I, I'm not saying that there wasn't the, the slave trade. and that, There was, definitely. But understand, when you have a, a dark Native American, somebody who's all over, already over here, who looks like the people you brought in from Africa... All you have to put them in chains and say, okay, Negro, you're a Negro now. They would class, this is on record of them classifying many Native Americans as Negroes. Look at the movie The Revenant. And I bring this up all the time. That, that movie that Leonardo DiCaprio, I think he won an Oscar. In that movie, they kept referring to Native Americans as tree niggas. This is a movie that just came out a couple of years ago. They kept referring to the Native Americans as tree niggers. Yeah, there's a reason why the Native Americans would use the term pale face. You ain't one of us. Now, all of them are pale face. You dig? Now, were there some people over because of the slave trade? Of course. Of course. Because we got to understand, in Virginia... And is it 1619 when they said they brought the first black people here? That's what that's the official story, which is bullshit, by the way. The official story, the first Africans to come to this land, as they like to lie and say, they say came over by some Dutch slavers. They came to Jamestown, Virginia, um, 1619. Hold on, this is Lexi. What's up, Lexi? You want some eggs from Jack No, no, no. I got some leftovers from, from inside. Hold on. Okay. All right. You, all, you almost home? Mm-hmm. I'm doing my live show, but all right. Say what's up, everybody. <laughs> Say what's up, everybody. What's up, everybody? <laughs> there you go. All right. I'll see you in a minute. That's my queen. All right. But what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Mama Peanut. That was Mama Peanut. But the 1600s, they said that um, the first Africans came to Jamestown, Virginia in 1619, right? That's what they say. But Around that same time, they did a census, and the census showed there were other black people. Is it 1607? I thought it was 16. One of those years. I understand this. Let me get the date right. I like to be right and exact. I like to be right and exact. Hold on one second. Let me get this date right. I ain't talking about 1492. Y'all, y'all just throwing out random fucking. Y'all bear with me, wasn't because I want to get these dates right. We're, we're, we're teaching here. Hold on. 
1619, I was right. That's what they said. Yes. They said the first Africans, which is a damn lie, that came to Point Comfort on the James River in August 1619. They said there was 20 and odd Negroes from the English ship, the White Lion, that were sold in exchange for food. Some were transported to Jamestown and sold again into slavery. But understand, I'm reading it says 1619, so I don't know where you're getting 1607. I don't know where you're getting 1607, brother. Hold on. Now the colony, I think, wasn't the colony um, created in 1607? So, yeah, you're getting the whole, okay, this is where you're getting the shit fucked up. They established the colony in 1607. All right? See, this is how people, right, this is how people get information all fucked up. It's 1607. No, that's when they established the colony in 1607. Got it? Shout out to Daniel Wright in London. Shout out to you, brother. Right. Yeah, this dude, I'm from I'm from Jamestown. It's 1607. See how motherfuckers can be from somewhere and wrong as hell. Getting misinformation out there. Got it? You get misinformation on top of other misinformation. But they said that they were they brought in 20 slaves, 20 Africans in 1619. The problem with that is when they did a census around that time. There were already some other Africans living there, and they never explained where they came from. So there was proof that there were already African people living there in Jamestown before those enslaved Africans came in. Also, there's a group of people who were called the Melungeons, some native people there. And they did, they did a DNA test on the Melungeons because that was a mysterious black looking group of people that were living in North America, the Melungeon Moors. And they'd been here for a long time. And for a long time, they, the descendants of them, because now you got some white descendants of them who didn't want to admit that these were black folks. They were trying to say that they were Turkish they were possibly Muslims from thousands of years ago or whatever. Melungeons. Yes, yeah, somebody in the room. It's almost like melanin, but Melungeon. The Melungeon people. They did a DNA test on the Melungeon people and found out these motherfuckers got sub-Saharan African DNA. And the white people who were descendants of them, oh, they had a hissy fit. That's why them white supremacists don't like no DNA. Them white supremacists do not like DNA. Well, that DNA showed all the damn receipts. Yeah, the Melungeons are those Appalachian, yeah. So the white supremacists love claiming the Melungeon bloodline because they were some indigenous people. So, like, yeah, I'm part Melungeon. But now, you say you're Melungeon, that's African. Y'all look that up. Look up the Melungeons. You dig? But the, the, the truth is, there were people who look like we look, who got reclassified as black or Negro by the white supremacists, and they were put into slavery. You understand? Many of them. Many of them. Yeah, black folks, I don't know why black folks hate we we should be we should get our DNA game up. Yeah, just like Cheddar Man, Cheddar Man in England. Oh, they didn't like that. They didn't like black ass Cheddar Man with the receipts. They didn't like that. They they brought out Cheddar Man. They didn't like the Cheddar Man receipts at the, the original British. And I talked about remember when I did that debate with Alt Right Andy? 
And I brought that up. I, I, I was bringing up all types of books and receipts. He was using the I'm white not say so narrative. I'm telling him about how the Irish and all those people in Britain, the original people were black. And I'm bringing receipts and books. He's trying to deny the books. And now they got scientific proof that those people were dark ass folks. You, you can get books from the 1800s. David, David McRitchie and all those dudes back in the 1800s said that. Man. Yeah, melanated people were everywhere. That's true. Man. First King of Valley. Yeah, man, there's a lot of that stuff going on over there, man. And we're gonna we're gonna touch on some of that in the new hidden colors. We're gonna talk, we're gonna touch on a lot of that stuff. I'm gonna, we're gonna get deeper into the indigenous DNA of, of black people in the next Hidden Colors. We're going to go real deep in that. We're going to go real deep in that. Yeah, David Imhotep, he really breaks that down in his books. Yeah, I know who, I know about David Imhotep. We're going to go deep. I'm telling y'all, man, that's why I, I, I'm not rushing the next Hidden Colors. You know, you, I got to take my time. We're going to break shit down. They, we're going to start break. We're going to break out that um, RH blood. Uh, that you know, you know, when they do the blood test on you, what's it called? They call it the RH. Um, it's basically your blood is tested on the rhesus monkey. It's, it's, it's kind of deep to explain. That's why when we do the, the movie... We're going to have to break this thing down real heavy. It's almost hella deep to explain. We're going to break, yeah, the RH3, yeah, yeah, the RH factor. Right, the RH factor. We're going to, we're going to be breaking that down. The blood type and how that shit is based on the rhesus monkey and how black people, we're RH negative. We don't have that shit in us. It's a, no, we're going to get so damn deep with the science. Yeah, RH positive, RH negative. Some of y'all already know. Some of y'all already know. Yeah, because all that old monkey shit that they put on us, and we don't have the RH, we don't have the monkey blood. We're like the only ones who don't have that shit. So we're going to get it into the DNA for real, for real. We're going to get real, real deep into it. We're going to see who the damn monkey is. You understand? What's up, T? Uh, what's going on? What's up, buddy? My son is here. Shout out. Look at my big boy. Hold on. This is my little big boy. It's here. They went to like a little Hawaiian theme party. <laughs> Got grass and shit in this here. Where's mommy? Whoa, where's mommy? Where's mommy and brother? Oh, I don't come in here messing with stuff. Oh, you got bed here, T. You got your little Hawaiian thing. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Well, what's wrong with um? What's up, team? What's wrong with uh, Mateo? He's asleep. Oh, okay. You show him your flower. There you go. Hmm? Oh, Lord, he's so tired. What's up, buddy? Oh, Lord. Oh, you were sleeping in the car? Yeah. Well, oh, that was a cute oh, the flowers. Man, he went to a Hawaiian theme party. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> What's going on? Boy, he's so tired. Let's put the picture on in there. Hey, Siri. <laughs> hey. Say hello. <laughs> hey. He looks tired. <laughs> man, man, man. Say hello. Hmm. Oh, yeah, take him. All right, he's tired. Well, okay. don't he? All right, buddy. There you go, buddy. Boy, he's so tired. He didn't really no, nap. He didn't really nap, did he? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All right. Oh, no. Man. Oh, that blade's so tired. Can he have this? Oh, uh, yeah. Let me wait. 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 Yeah, wait. Yeah, I'm going to eat. Let's go eat. 
I'll be in the house in a minute, boys. Bye, buddy. <clears throat> Thank y'all, fam. Family. Cute family. The boys look good. Doing their thing. Mateo was tired as hell. I know. He, he was so tired. Yeah, they just went to a little party. They got their, they went to a little Hawaiian theme. So hopefully they had to sleep good. Shit. Man. Man, man, man. Yeah, real talk, Thomas. It's, we, we're gonna have to start telling the truth. The I, the R H factor test. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, we're gonna break all that down. Yeah, yeah. We we, we breaking all the shit down. Yeah. Yeah. Most of us are R H negative. Most of us, most black people are. You dig? Yeah, Mateo, he, yeah, yeah, they, they're so tired. Yeah, Mateo didn't get to take his nap. Yeah, man, and we were just there. We were in Hawaii on the big island where all the, where, we were at the volcano when we went. We went to visit that volcano when we went to the big island of Hawaii a few months ago. Yeah, we went up there. We had a good time out there in Hawaii. We were... Because usually we're in um, Oahu, and I went to Oahu by myself to work on the Mink Slide album, by the way. But, um, but um, yeah, we're at the big island where that big-ass eruption popped off. You dig? Yeah, that shit is crazy. But, um, yeah, that's why in, in the new movie, in the new Hidden Colors, we're going to get deep in and science and how it relates to us and the DNA and the RH factor. Yeah, we, we're going to go there. We're going to go real deep. Yeah, we're going to get real deep with it. See, the kids look like Bruno Mars. I know, they do look like Bruno Mars a little bit. Man. South Carolina has 4,000 Reese's monkeys on it. Wow. Yeah, I think we talked about sickle cell before. I think we talked about it before. You live in Oahu? Oh, yeah. Oh, you lived in Oahu. Okay, you lived there before. I love it out there, man. I really, really love it out there. The, An the Anukai, the Anunukai. I remember Dr. York talking about that. Yeah, the spies of Mississippi. Yeah, that was that was heavy. I saw that, and they, just all the snitches was crazy. Yeah, man, Mother Nature is fighting back, man. But yeah, you know, I'm just really taking my time with the hidden colors, the new one. You know, just soaking up some stuff and just really letting the ideas come to me. I don't like to force it. I like for things to kind of come to me organically things to talk about things that I I feel that would best serve the community things that I, I feel that we should know you dig and then what I have what happens I I, uh, I let the energy bring certain people to be in it now in the, the new hidden colors we're gonna have many of the regular folks that's been in been all of them but you know we're gonna have some new faces in there too I would love to get Kaepernick in it I would love to get Colin Kaepernick What's up, Philanda? Thank you, dear. Philanda put her nine ninety nine on there. Much respect to you. Yeah, did y'all see that flooding in Maryland? That flooding was crazy. It was like in a little suburban area outside of Baltimore. You did? Who is somebody talking about she wanted to be? I have no idea who the hell that is. Man, man, man. 
I got who fired? Who did I get fired? Was on the coon friend. Oh, oh, okay. The dude who was cooning. His wife left him. Got him. That's funny. That's funny. All right. Yeah, we're going to have, when we do Hidden Colors 5, we're going to have it all over the place, you know. You know, and I, I take care of that once, you know, once I get the movie done. I don't, like, when I'm working on a movie, I don't try to focus on all the theaters and all that yet. I like to really focus on making the movie as good as possible. I know when I was working on 1804, so many people are calling, hey, let's, let's get it, we're ready to screen it. When is it going to be screened? Like, no, I, let me finish the movie. I don't want to have a deadline. I'm telling everybody, and then I'm going to be getting calls nonstop. I said, just let me finish the film, and then we'll let y'all know when when the release date is and all that stuff. And people get real excited. These these things are real big events. Hidden Colors 5 is going to be huge. We ain't even got started on that, but so many people are waiting on it. It's going to be huge. It's really, really going to be a huge thing already. So that's why, you know, I, I got to... Come with it. I gotta come with it. Much respect, um, brother Ben Yisrael. Much respect. That sounds like um, um, you sound like part of the Yahweh Ben Yahweh crowd, brother. That lady. In Oh, yeah, the lady down in Texas. Yeah, yeah, y'all hear about the lady down in Texas, the sister who lied and said the cop raped her and touched her inappropriately. And she said that um, her boyfriend showed up and the cop threatened her boyfriend. That's a whole bunch of shit. And it turned out she was lying because they got the, the, the body cam. Now, notice I didn't, because I tweet about a lot of shit. And when I hear a story, I put the information out there. But that one... It smelled fishy from the get-go, so I never, I never touched that. I knew someone right with that. I like to really investigate some, when because people send me shit every day. I get stories across my emails every day. I definitely want to have Nipsey Hussle in Hidden Colors Five. Yes, I definitely want to have Nipsey in Hidden Colors Five. I actually, I want to have Dame Dash in there too. But um, that story about that the the sister who said she got raped by the cop down in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My man, he jumped on it a little bit too fast. And I like to kind of get some more sources. I like to get a little more info. You know what I'm saying? And something something didn't sound right about that. You know, I, I like to verify certain things. And just something, it, something didn't sound right about that. You did? Man. Yeah, I'm going to come back to the Bay, man. I miss y'all up in the Bay. I got a lot of love for the Bay. Yeah, and I do need to talk more about those Gullah Geechies. I do want to talk about that, the Gullah Geechee Rebellion. Some, I'm telling y'all some of the stuff we're going to touch on at Hidden Colors 5. Definitely, I want to touch more on the Seminoles. Talk about those Gullah Geechies. Talk about the indigenous black people here want to really get into that a little bit deeper. Um, we want to talk about African martial arts, African fighting styles, <clears throat> African warfare. That's something I really want to get into. We're going to talk about health. We're going to talk about the DNA and the, the, um, the RH factor. We're going to get into that. I, I want to get into foods. I want to get into foods and diet. I want to talk about that type of stuff and health. I want to I want to get into that and how that relates to melanated people. You dig? I think we already touched on eugenics before. We touched on that. Come to Detroit. Yes, I do need to go to Detroit. My cousin Lawrence, he's working on opening a restaurant out there. I can't wait till he gets that pop. And what's funny, Lil Pump goes to the studio I work out of. Yeah, Lil Pump goes into the studio. He's like a regular there. 
at the studio, we're working on the Mink Slide album. Yeah, we um, we're doing a lot of the the finishing touches on another. We were working at a place called Clear Lake, and now we're we're doing all the finishing touches at another studio that's a real popular studio out here. And you know, you got everybody. Beyonce was up there like last week. I mean, so it's that like this moment is tight, tight ass studio. All the top folks go to, so that's why, like, when we do some shit, I want to go where the top people get their shit popping. The next single is probably going to be a song called "City Lights." That's a song that a lot of folks like. It's a real mellow groove, it's a mellow, cool ass, mid-tempo player ass song. So that's going to be the next video. I'm trying to think the next single and video. I'm trying to think of a video concept for it though. You dig? Parasite cleanses. <laughs> you just have Ray Goodman and Brown. Yeah, City Lights, that's the jam. City Lights is the jam. You dig? Yeah, I played it because I was at the studio, and it, I'm in the studio for hours, so I'm I'm going live in between you know, recording, and we're playing some of the shit. It's banging, man. No, we know it, there's no raps on Mink Slide. Because I've, I've had some friends who are rappers, and they were like, do you need us to drop a verse? Uh, not on this one. Not on this one, because this the, the whole Mink Slide album, the concept of this album, we want to make it feel like a, a lost album from the 80s. That's the vibe. It's, it's a concept album. That's what we don't have. You don't have that lately. Because a lot of folks don't like putting out albums in the music industry. Because a lot of folks like just putting out singles. You know what I'm saying? Because with singles, especially independent artists, you put out a single and you know you get a buzz and then you can you know sell your album to the record label or whatever. But no, we're doing a little bit different. We're going to just put the album out ourselves. We're going to have a whole concept album where the, the album is that 80s and 90s funk shit. It's that, that R&B, that old school. And it's going to sound, it's going to have that very nostalgic sound like you're listening to a group from the, a lost album from the 80s. Like, where the fuck, where, how didn't, how did I miss this album? You dig? Yeah, we're going to keep it independent. Cause I could put out a bunch of singles and all that, but no, we, we're gonna put it out. We're gonna put out the whole album ourselves. We're gonna put the whole album out ourselves. We're gonna keep that thing independent. Let me tell you something. We put the single out, and again on Google Play, the single went to number three on the R&B charts, and on iTunes it went to number eight on the R&B charts. And you don't have independent R&B records. Now, independent rap records, that's one thing, because you can it's easy to put out some a little catchy rap and whatever. But we put out an independent R and B record, which is very rare, and it was competing with the, the major R and B stuff. And that's just the single, our very first single. So now that we got that buzz, we're gonna get a bigger buzz with the second single, and then we're gonna drop the Egyptian Musk album. You dig? And I want to go on right when we release the album because I want to release the album this summer, possibly by July or August. And I want to go on a road. We do a, a mini tour where me, Mink Slide, and the group, the APX, they open for us. We want to do possibly Atlanta, definitely D.C., and definitely New York. Definitely those three. Just hit them up back to back, do concerts there. We want all y'all to come on out and rock with us. We want all of y'all to come on out and rock with us. He said, what about a melodic wash your ass? <laughs> yes, we're going to get vinyl too. We're going to get vinyl pressed up. You dig? Man. Do I need a break dancer? No. 
Oh yeah, the, we we're still working on that reality show. Yeah, that's turning out good. As a matter of fact, I got to go over some of the edits and send to my guy. But yeah, that's coming out good. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna call him tonight. I'm let y'all remind me. You did. Yeah, because that, that's my thing with the this Mink Slide album. Yeah, I'm, I wanted, I just want to have the the music catalog, so you know later on, my kids can have something. Because like when I die later on, or soon, or whatever the fuck I die, I know a lot of my stuff is going to have value. A lot of my books are going to be valued. The movies are going to be valued. So. You know, I always set up stuff for my children, so I know this album is going to be very valuable. Your yeah, Dame Funk, my man Dame Funk, that's my dude. I hit up Dame. We were chopping up the other day. Dame, he played um, keyboards on several other songs on the Egyptian Musk album. Dame Funk played keyboards on a lot of songs. He was funking it up. Dame was getting it in. That's a good question. Jay Rich asked me a very good question. He says, how do I feel about the 1,500 missing immigrant kids? And that's very sad. That's very sad. And I saw pictures. Very sad of the, those children in the detention centers. That's very sad. I saw that. Those children being detained, being taken from their families. That's very sad. But... Own your own nuts. I hate to be like that, but own your own nuts on that one. I hate to go there, but own your own nuts on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hold your own nuts on that one. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's something y'all going to have to deal with. They're going to have to deal with that. You know why? You know why they're going to have to hold their own nuts? Because too many Latinos and Hispanics voted for fucking Trump. Y'all voted for him. Y'all eat that. Don't come over here looking for us to fight for you. I ain't fighting for you. You shouldn't have voted for him. Y'all voted for him. Y'all were sitting up there talking that bullshit with him, and then it backfired on you, and then they want to look over here to black folks like, hey, we in this together. No, we ain't. Hold your own nuts. That's fucked up. That's sad. Y'all shouldn't have voted for him. Hold your own nuts. Get out there and do something about it. We'll be right here at home cheering for you, but I'm not out there fighting for you. Y'all shouldn't have voted for him. Y'all going to have to eat that. You made your bed and it backfired on you. You're going to have to lie in it. I'm not fighting for no groups who tried to pull a whammy-bammy and then it backfired and now they want to look at us like, hey, aren't we in this together? Uh, no, no, no. You, It's your turn now. That's how we got to be. It's your turn. Yes, that's unfortunate. Yes, that's horrible. I'm not fighting for you, though. I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to sit at home and pray. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that it gets better. I'm going to send my prayers. But as far as us stepping out there fighting for you, because that's what they really want. Folks want us to do the fighting for them so they can be in the background chilling. And then we knock the doors down and fight for them. And then they run in and get all the benefits and then throw us back under the bus. So, no, you made your bed. You're going to have to lie in it. Y'all should not have voted for them. Too many Latinos down in Miami, those Cubans, all of those, your fellow um, Hispanic brethren, they were voting for Trump. Y'all Hispanic brethren, they were all up in the alt-right. I argue with these Hispanic alt-righters all the time. Your Hispanic brethren are the ones who put you in that situation. Y'all got to work that shit out with yourselves. Y'all got to work it out. I sat up here and told y'all about white supremacy and y'all wanted to argue and y'all wanted to talk shit about black folks and y'all wanted to prop up George Zimmerman, all these people, Officer Yanez. Ain't nobody spoke out from their community against Yanez. For us, ain't nobody talked down on no Zimmerman when they're killing our babies. 
They told us to hold our own nuts, and I'm treating all these groups the same way they treat us. That's where I am with mine. I'm treating everybody else the same way they treat us. No better, no worse. So I'm when they see our kids getting gunned down, I'm doing just what the fuck they do. Nothing. When they see the Trayvon Martins and the Mike Browns and the Tamir Rices getting gunned down and killed, I'm doing just what they do about it. Nothing. Oh, no. I, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm going to let you handle that. Is it unfortunate? Yes. That's horrible. So deal with it. I'll pray for you. Don't ask me to come do nothing. I'm praying for you. All my energy is on here on black side of the board. I'm over here looking out for the black folks. And most people who have any type of stature, they're so afraid to say that. I'm looking out for the black people first. Because, look, I have Hispanic friends and I have Asian friends. I have all these people, individual friends or whatever. But when it comes to a group thing, I'm going to make sure my folks, black, because black people, we're all victims of white supremacy and we're the biggest victims of white supremacy and we don't get to be off and on victims. You dig? We don't get to hide our identity because we, we have the melanin and the melanin, that's the crime right there. So we've been criminalized in a system of white supremacy. So I have a camaraderie with other melanated people who are victims of white supremacy. And nobody's helping us. Nobody's doing anything to help us. Nobody's doing anything to help our children. But the minute something happens to everybody and their children, well, black people, come on, y'all got to stop the presses. You, you got to help us, black folks. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, man, that's mess. I mean, what, what, what they going to do? Now, let's just be real. What they going to do if we don't jump up and march with them and protest with them and, and help them and, 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 and yell at the white supremacists, what are they going to do if we don't do that? Nothing. The same shit you've been doing anyway. Nothing. What, what you going to stop helping us? You ain't helping us. Nobody's helping us. So, yeah, when I see that, that's horrible. It's so it's horrible seeing children in a situation like that. But you y'all going to have to deal with that. Y'all are going to have to deal with that because history has shown when we show compassion to people and fight for them and get beat up for them and get our heads bashed in for them, they don't really appreciate it. It's never reciprocal. They do not appreciate it. When people come over here, we not only do we fight for them, they eat off us. They come up to the black neighborhood, set up shop. We fund everything that they do. We The money that comes from us funds their children's schooling, education, funds their wealth that they funnel back home, and all we get is shit on. So hold your own nuts. Yeah, that's why I wasn't all gung-ho about that Dakota Pipeline thing. Black folks are all out there getting water holes and fuck that. And black folks, the same so-called, some of these $5 Indians who you out there fighting with, getting water hosed, they turn around and throw all the black people out of their damn tribe so you don't get no money or no casino. Fuck out of here. You think I'm going to go out there and get my ass whooped for you? Nigga, please. Hold your own corn. Those same people, and I saw so many black folks out there, we, we got to get out there in justice. No, we got to get out there in that pipeline. Oh, Lord, we got to get out. You out there at that pipeline just getting your ass towed up. And boy, those Native Americans, $5 Indians, they ain't real Native Americans, they go out of their way to deny the black Native tribes and the, the black Native members. They go out of their way to deny them money, funding, land. I mean, they literally go out of their way to, to shit on black people who got Native American ancestry. And I'm supposed to be caping for these? Man, fuck out of here. Hell no. 
I'm not catering for these groups. Just like I said the other day, there was a, a, an Asian American dude who's a, he's a military guy. Some white lady pulled up. They had a road rage incident. She was shitting on him. She was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, go back to fucking China. You fucking ugly." You know, just calling them all types of names, and they over here looking at us like, "Hey, man, racism is real, man. If you don't turn your ass around, don't come over here looking at us." Don't come over here looking at us. Don't come over here talking about racism is real. And y'all had a march for Peter Liang. Oh, I don't forget nothing. Oh, I didn't forget that Peter Liang march. All of y'all got together and marched to support Peter Liang, who killed an innocent black man. Y'all all got together to support your guy for murdering a black person. And I'm supposed to jump up when... You experience some white supremacy? No, thank you. Y'all done shot Latasha Harlings and the lady got off. Soon Joan, Jung Wu, I think that's her name. No. No, I, I never forgot about Latasha Harlings. I never forgot about her, our sister here in L.A. I'm not caping for none of these groups. Fuck that. Yeah, is, is some of the shit fucked up that happens? Yeah, that's horrible. But you're going to have to deal with it. We're not going to fight for you. I'm not. I don't care about these bedwitches and coons. I ain't fighting for you. I'm saving all of my energy for black society. Daniel Holtzclaw. Not only, not only did Daniel Holtzclaw, this is another thing. You know, Daniel Hostclaw, that hopper, he's Asian and white. He thought he was white. That's why they let him go to jail, because they can, and the white supremacists is in their mind. They're like, okay, well, he ain't really, really white, 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 white. But that hopper raped all those sisters. Do you know that you got these bed wench, coon-ass, wannabe white supremacists, Filipinos and Asians, Caping for this guy right now, that Michelle Malkin, that Fox News chick, she's Filipino or whatever. She's one of the people in the forefront trying to help get him out of jail. They're trying to get him out of jail. Now, Michelle Malkin, major Asian bedwench or Polynesian, she's Filipino, so that's kind of Asian, kind of whatever. But she identifies with Asian. But she's a major mammy bedwench. And She's working to get him out of jail. I mean, they're really working to get Hostclaw out of jail heavy. You see how they, they she's that, that Asian, even though it's a minute Asian, he's half Asian or whatever, but it's that camaraderie. Let's work with the white supremacists to get our brethren out. You dig? And a lot of folks don't even know she's doing that, but Google that. Google Michelle Markin. And Daniel Holtzclaw, she's really going out of her way to try to get that dude out of jail. They, they're trying to go through all types of loopholes to get him out of jail for raping all them damn black women. And you think I'm a cape for them? Man, please. Fuck out of here. But we cape, we got Issa Rae caping for them. We got black folks. We, we're so busy caping for them. And usually it's that bedwinch thing. And Negroes too. I ain't, I'm not putting it all on women. There's coons too. Don't act like we don't get on the coons. But the thing is, black folks, we're so damn desperate to be loved. And we're so desperate to get in bed with every other fucking group. We jump up caping. Like clowns. Man. But anyway, man, I've been on here for a long ass time. Damn. I've been on here for three damn hours, man. I haven't done a three hour show in a long time. Man. Okay, let me get off here, man. I'm, I'm at the three hour mark almost. My God. I've been on here with y'all ass. We, what, what, what have we been talking about all this time? Damn. I, uh, time flies, don't it? I didn't know I was on here this long with y'all asses. Yeah, John Henry Clark tried to tell us years ago, we have no friends. 
We have no friends. Man, we have been in here spitting. In here heavy. Yeah, it's been a very interesting night, boy, even with the callers, man. Real funny shit. Real funny stuff with the callers. But um, anyway, family, y'all look below. Y'all see below? Y'all see below? Look below. If y'all watching this live, look below. Right now, y'all need to do four things. Let's look below. This is what y'all need to do. Number one, contribute to the Melanoid Ministry so we can do good things in the community, as we always do. We got to have that war chest going 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days in a year. We always got to have that going because we never know when we need an emergency, and that's what the MelanoidNation.org is for. It's very important. We do a lot of good stuff behind the scenes. I'm doing more stuff. Shout out, we, we did a lot of good stuff with Melanoid Nation in Africa, over there in Zimbabwe. I'm going to be doing some more stuff with the, the farmers over there. Also, if you see below, you see the link to 1804movie.com. Everybody, y'all need to see the movie about the Haitian Revolution. If you like the Hidden Colors movies, you're going to love 1804movie.com. It's a great movie. Go to hiddencoloursfilm.com. Also, below you see the Mink Slide shirts. Everybody needs to get your Mink Slide t-shirts and rock your shirts for the summer in anticipation for the album. You dig? Minkslide.com. All right. We're about to be out, family. Y'all um, follow me on Instagram. At Tariq Elite. Yes, y'all gotta keep supporting in the, and with the Melanoid Ministries, that has to be an ongoing thing. Because we there's so many things that pop up in the community that we try to be right there for. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to give up too much information because a lot of stuff we need to start doing in a covert manner. We need to start being more covert. I hate to, I really hate announcing things before we do it. I like to talk about things after it's done. You understand? So we, we, we need that constant war chest popping off. We really need that going on. You understand? Because people always ask, how can we help this situation? That That's something that should be done on a regular basis. Because I noticed with these people in the dominant society, where they get money just overnight for little shit. Because the white supremacists, they understand how to chip in a little to create that economic base to get things done. You understand? Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the Black Seminoles of Florida. We're definitely going to talk about that. Also, we're gonna, I'm going I'm to break down the connection between white supremacy and Satanism. We're going to go real deep in Hidden Colors 5, by the way. We're going to go real deep in that. Yes. Yes, I'm always accepting the Mackish instrumentals for the show. Yeah, I, I really hate announcing a lot of shit, you know, before we do it. You know what I'm saying? That's why um, I'm going to get a Facebook group, a real private Facebook group, so that the 300 can really talk. I'm still going to do that. Y'all hit me up let me know the best way to do that. And the best way to screen people, because everybody has a Facebook page, but I want to have like a, a private group that's very exclusive. And this, I, I need some ideas on how to screen people so that we can have our little think tank in there, our little conversations, and we can get a lot of stuff. We can talk about a lot of stuff on the low. Yeah, so we're still hiring Melanoid Nation writers too. You dig? Yeah, follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite on Instagram. We uh, we chop a real good game on Instagram. Oh yeah, we're gonna break that down. How these white supremacists are all tied in with these Satanist groups. I mean, we breaking the shit down heavy in Hidden Color Spy. But that's that's later. That's later. That's later. You know, that's later. You dig? Yeah. So because when we have a think tank in the the, the Facebook page, you know, I really want to screen it because much respect to some of the callers, but I don't want 
Moist Marcus to call in. <laughs> Marcus from Moist Marcus from Mission Viejo. Mission Viejo. I don't want him, you know, he's a cool guy. He called up, you know, he was going through some things with, with Zaddy. But I don't know if we need to have him in the, the think tank conversation, you know. Much respect to Brother Marcus who called up. Much respect to him. I ain't shitting on you, but, you know, you, you're having some personal problems, brother. You're having some personal problems. You dig? So... You know, I, I want to have the 300. I mean, my die-hard folks, you know, my ride-or-die folks in there. Because I don't even want to have a whole bunch of people, really. I really don't want to. I, I was thinking about literally limiting it to 300 people at the most. Even if that. You know, I really, really don't want a lot of people in there. Because I only want a couple of hundred, or even less, to be honest, of the great, the good minds. The great minds. People who can really... Have some, bring some good ideas to the table and chop up some stuff and really be down to get shit done on a grassroots level. You understand? Yeah, yeah, that might even be too many. Real talk. Even 300 might be too many. You dig? Say it's not Sparta. But see, I always use the term 300 because if you look at the first Hidden Colors, and most of the Hidden Colors movies, most of the movies when we do the crowdfunding, it's usually we get stuff funded with about 300 people. It's usually around 300 people that will contribute to the projects and get it done. And so 300, that's a very significant number. And I always say, if you get 300 people down, you can change the world. If you get 300 people down, like the very first Hidden Colors, we got 300 people who contributed to that. And those 300 people, those are the only people I really give a shit about, to be honest. Because you have 299, but a couple of people, you know, made contributions on the actual website. So it was around, it was 300. But those people are very significant to me. Those people who donated for the first Hidden Colors. Those people helped change history. I really want y'all to understand how important those 300 people are. And some of y'all are in here now. So we got a couple of thousand in here now. But my 300, that's what I always refer to. Those people who contributed. Those 300 people who contributed to the first Hidden Colors film. Y'all changed the course of history. Y'all changed the course of history. Y'all help usher in a new awakening, a new sense of knowledge, a, a new level of consciousness that has resonated all over the world. DJ Incog, you wanted the 300, real talk. You dig? Beach here, you wanted the 300? See, I can see who's real because it's documented. So when people say, because motherfuckers like to come in after the fact. It's like the most fake-ass civil rights niggas. Oh, yeah, I, I marched with Dr. King. Shit. Oh, hell yeah, man. I was right there with Malcolm X. And those niggas were somewhere at a damn juke joint back then. They weren't nowhere near Malcolm X or Dr. King. You did? You let every Negro over the age of 60 now, you let them tell it, they march with Dr. fucking King. Dr. Martin Luther King marched with 40 million people if, if you let them tell it. Dr. King, man, I was right out there. I was right there in Selma. Man, I still got the shoes I wore in Selma. <laughs> you let them tell it. You dig? But the thing is, is that 300, that, that first 300, those 300s, those are the realest ones out here. For that first Hidden Colors one, I, I, I'm not saying the other people who contributed to the other ones aren't real. I ain't saying that, but after the thing, after the, the, the brand became successful, then everybody wanted to get on it, which is cool. That's fine. 
but it was the first, that first 300 for Hidden Colors 1. If your name is on that list, your name, you are in a special part of damn history. You dig? I'm telling you, 300 people on the same page, you can get anything done. You can change the world. You can change the, you can change history. And that's what I like. I like for groups of us to get on the same page. You dig? Because once you get at least 300 people on the same page, then you can get everybody else. You can influence other, group, other people. You can influence other groups. You dig? Oh, damn, you a white Jesus worshiping Values voter. Yeah, there you go. Man, so, yeah, so we got to, we always, that's why I always mention, I always talk about 300. That's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about that group. You always got to bow down to them and give them props, man. You, I, I, me and everybody else, you always got to give that first 300 the props that they deserve. I always give it to them. And they know who they are, and you can go look at the list and see those names. You can see who's who. Those are very, 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 very important people, man. They help get this thing popping. And I'm talking about this thing has influenced people everywhere, all over the world. This thing has influenced people. You did? What's up, Sheik? I remember your name, Sheik. Some of these names I remember. What's up, Heru? My man, Heru Jones. Brother Heru be helping me. With the beats, he dropped some beats on the um the the the, the Tariq radio show. And get names from the Hidden Colors collection too. Man. But but I'm gonna let everybody know when the Hidden Colors Five thing is coming. You know, that's you know highly anticipated, but you know, I gotta take my time with that one. But anyway, man, I'm, let me get up out of here. Yeah, y'all believe. Yeah, that's the thing. Because y'all didn't, nobody knew what it was going to be about. Because y'all, because y'all, that 300 got on it, that inspired me to do a real good job of doing the movie. Because I, I said, okay, look, we're going to do this Kickstarter thing. Kickstarter was new. And then when the, the 300 folks put the money on it, I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, they came through. Because I didn't know people were going to come through or not because Kickstarter was new. I'm like, okay, look, if y'all, if we help raise this money, I'll do this movie. I get this thing popping. And they did it. So I'm like, okay. They were like, okay, we did it. Now, what's your move? So that made me step my shit up. I'm like, well, shit, okay, they did it. All right. Yeah, we we even sat up here on the chat room on my Ustream show. We, we talked about it. We sat up and talked about what should be in it. We were brainstorming on the name, all that stuff. There was a white lady mad because Obama. Yeah, Obama follows me on Twitter. A lot of people follow me on Twitter. You dig? Yeah, I know Obama's been following me for years. Yeah, I did want to go to Detroit, but, you know, we were, you know, we had already been to a number of cities, so we had to come on back. But anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here, man. All right, y'all, I'm going to be here for four fucking hours talking to y'all ass. Let me go in here with Mama Peanut and see what's up with my babies. All right, y'all, it's been real. Y'all follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. Um, I'm going to holler. Peace.